I'm just going to name it to kick and. All right. So we're live. Um, this is the first time I'm using StreamYard uh, on this end. So I hope you all will forgive any uh, any problems that we encounter. Hey there, Deshaun. Welcome. Thanks for thanks for uh, doing this. Thanks for putting up with um, with with all sorts of changes at the last minute. So we thanks a lot. This. We got this. This is fun. I'm I am very much looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I hit the button uh, inside of Streamyard that said uh, stream to your channels. So I hit the button. So we'll see if. If that works and this is i was impressed i've never seen that before um so yeah i'm all the way around impressed so far already we're, and we just all right started. um so plan was uh, i basically have two two apps that i figured we'd go through the upgrade one hopefully will be somewhat more straightforward um, a smaller app uh but still on 2.7 um let me so, go ahead and which in two days, that will be yes. out of support. Actually, isn't it already out of support technically? Uh, I think it's eleven twenty-four. So that's oh okay. So they 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 give you a, a, a like a two-day overlap between the the, the three two release and then then three, two comes out. Yeah. Tomorrow. 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 Yeah. yeah. So one day overlap, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go double check, check my stats. I'm gonna go to Spring.io, projects, Spring Boot, support two dot seven, and to support eleven twenty-four. All right, so so just in time. Three dot two initial release is eleven twenty three. Yep. All right, uh, and I'm gonna set up this layout because it's a little. There we go. Okay. So that's also another cool feature that um, Streamyard really one of the limiting factors was like the layouts at first. So yeah. I don't remember when they changed it and gave you a little bit of flexibility on creating your layouts. Um, but like when they did that, I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was like, oh, good. Cause, cause um, I didn't, I didn't spring for the higher end, no pun intended. I didn't spring for the higher end uh, stream yard. So the resolution's at 720 and I'm usually broadcasting at 1080. That's yeah. That's what it was. So yeah. I did spring for that um, and it was for the 1080 and that's why. Yeah, if I if I have to decide if I want to want to do that because I'm usually going through OBS, which is great if if it's just me because mm -hmm. then I have Ryan really nice OBS layout and I've got the, the chat and I've got the music in the background and I've got the various different scenes that I can switch to, um, and I don't pay anybody anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, bring guests on board. Um, I've done some pair streaming so. Uh, Earlier this year, did some did a lot of pair streaming with with James Shore, um, but it took a while to get that configuration set up properly because yeah. we were also pairing on screens and, and things like that. Yeah, um, and I didn't want to put you through that extra like hurdle that's the thing. I I don't have uh, yeah I don't have agendas really. Um, I like bringing people on and I do it like randomly like oh hey like we're we're having a yeah. conversation chat like yeah. do you want to come on. And just beyond and then we give them a link and all they need is their browser if they've got a webcam and mic uh, yep. they're good so there's no real setup on their side yeah, yeah. And that experience has been great yeah and yeah. i don't you know i think i've been paying for this the pro bucket um for a year or coming up on a year i think it was january maybe uh but i really didn't start getting the value until just recently yeah um, where you know, streaming more and doing more stuff. So, yeah. So yeah, definitely being able to bring bring folks ad hoc on on screen and and uh, not having that that hurdle of, of any kind of setup is definitely definitely worth it. So, um, let me go to the code for this, and I'm gonna zoom in even more. So that way folks can can really read it. And I'm watching the chat and now I don't I don't maybe know your audience as well. Uh, and oh hey we low. Awesome. It's like hey. How, what, what, oh, yeah, no we low, no, no dark mode uh for, for this stream. <laughs> <laughs> nice okay. try though. I, I nice was try. waiting. Uh <laughs> what, what 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 what's the setup here? 
no, no, no dark mode here. Um, I'll, 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 I'll refund your, uh, <laughs> yeah. So light mode is modern. It's back. Light go. mode is back. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's the thing too, at, at conferences, like depending on the room and the light, like that's a serious decision. You know, yeah. Like whether if you can make that adjustment, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I know learning from having presented like depends on the room but usually like actually dark slides tend to to be better um but if they've got a really pro setup and actually sometimes the the light light theme is better and so it's uh, it's hit or miss but when i'm when i'm streaming and it's and it's later um uh then i then then i'm much more willing to to switch to dark mode because i know folks are sitting with a ipad in their bed or whatever yeah uh, thank you so much for letting me know about my audio. I, I bumped it up a little bit, so hopefully that. that yeah, helps. let us. Yeah, I haven't. One thing that Streamyard does not do is give me any sense of audio signal for anybody, which is something that I do right. get uh, nicely with with OBS. So if, yeah. if any of the audio is is not good, also let let me know absolutely if if like fonts or, or other things are not readable because I'm having to bump up my screen like by by. You know, it looks by like a lot on my side. Yeah. This is this is 150 percent. So it's like 50 percent larger because uh, because because 720. Yeah. Um, you so can click on that hide button down at the bottom too of the screen. Yeah, I guess I can do that. There we go. Oops. And it, it did some weird things before, but now it's okay. So what this little app is, um, this was uh, one of those apps I created because anytime I was doing some some date or time formatting. I always like had to go to the documentation. The documentation is not that readable. Like one of the things that I'm really big on is, as some of you in the audience know, is I'm big on examples. And so um, what I wanted was a little tool that would help me create the format strings for for the the date time formatter. And um, and so what I want is something where it's like I could say, well, what does it look like if I've got a two year a two digit year and uh, the long numericals for the other one. So what it does is it shows you, so here's the pattern, and you can basically just copy and paste it. And eventually I would add a little copy yeah. copy link. Yeah. Um, and then it shows you some examples, like here's what it would look like if the months are, are short. Uh, and here's what it looks like if, if the months are long and then, and then basically some other dates. And then you can play around, it's like, ah, I want the four digit year because that looks better. Um, but let's let's use a short numerical and see what that looks like. And so the idea is you can sort of play with this and and conf sort of configure it and then get it to, to, to what you like. Um, That's it. So it it's a pretty, you know, it's it does stuff. Yeah. Um, and this is actually in spring 2.6. Uh, no judgment here. So no, this no is here at all. Um, and, and as I was looking at it, I was like, oh, wow, it's really that old? I haven't, I haven't touched this in, 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 in quite some time. So I thought this would actually be, um, this would be a, a good starter because it's not doing any database stuff. It's not mm -hmm. doing any security stuff, but it is doing some stuff um, and, and that'll be a good start. The other application that will, that will probably take quite a bit more time is my Ensembler application. Yep. Uh, um, and this one is is going to be uh, fun. Fun. Fun is the word. Fun is definitely the word. Uh, so this one's on the latest two point seven because I've been I've been keeping that fairly up to date. Right. Um, but it's on Java seventeen. Although the uh, yeah, the hard things are probably already taken care of. If you're already on Java seventeen, this yeah. So that's be easier than we expect. Well, the Java part will be easy. What the and I and I think we discussed this at, at some other point. Um, the security is going to be fun, and the database. I assume this, but we'll see. So there's so this one is a full. You know, it's got database. It's got OAuth uh, against GitHub for for security, um, and uh, oh, perfect. So there's there's all sorts of all sorts of, of, of good stuff. Um, the nice thing is, is of course, <laughs> since this is me, is all these apps are tested. Hey, Simon, welcome. That is so cool. Like, so you're you're able to see here in the comments. You're you're seeing comments from from my stream as well, and I'm oh, know, neat. just overjoyed. Uh, oh, that's so awesome. That's Glad awesome. That 
Robotech, hello. Simon, hello. We're glad that you're here. Happy Thanksgiving. Very uh, so we low, so we low mentions. Uh, oh, let me find that. So we low mentions. I assume he's referring to the, to the date formatter. Um, I remember reading something about Y versus U, and every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, okay, and then I forget about it. So I think there's something about Y versus U in terms of the year, but this works. Um, so yeah. All right. <laughs> And yes, tomorrow is is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So, uh, thanks for the good wishes. So, so where what should we do? Where should we get thing. started? So, what I normally do, uh, in my role, like this is a big part of me. Like when I see that two dot six dot four, uh, I want people to be on the latest and greatest. You know, the three dot two is coming out tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, Simon knows that I, I want you to go to the, um, open rewrite docs. Uh, so docs.openrewrite.org and then go to, there's a recipe catalog on the left, uh, recipe catalog, uh, go to Java. There's a bunch of recipes in here for all sorts of different languages. And then the right go to spring. And then we're gonna do Spring Boot 3.x. Now, one of the cool things so I, I want saw to point out is like, yeah, this is uh, very oh, very this. new. I got the note. I got the note yesterday from Tim DeBeat. Yep, I saw that note. Yep. Pushed that. And I'm like, yep. wow. Like, thank you so much. How cool is it that when that release comes, if you're paying attention, you can have automation that goes and upgrades all the version upgrade all the palms, right? The spring cloud meme. Uh, so we're going to yes. not go to 3.2. We're going to go to 3.1 and then yeah. 3.2 yeah. will next day. So yeah. do the Maven spring boot up, go down a little bit. Maven to spring boot 3.1. That's just the properties. That'll just yeah. do the properties, but the uh, other recipe yeah. will do everything. So scroll down a little bit. It says migrate to spring boot 3.1. Uh, I see. Up one more. Uh, yeah, that's probably, probably work. I just changed my local alias yeah. uh, for that. Uh, but if you scroll down, uh, are you using Maven or Gradle? I'm using Maven. I am. I am okay. a Gradle. I am a Gradle hater. I'm a Gradle hater. Um, I admit I it. I hate Gradle. I think Gradle's got its uh, its use cases, and I understand. Uh, but I'm also a Maven fan, and I'll tell you the number one reason why: because of the schema. Because I can take a Maven project, and I can make adjustments to it, and know what. The results going to be because of the schema. Exactly, uh, exactly. That's why so, I mean, hate, hate perhaps is it too strong? I I have been traumatized by uh, very very large and complex Gradle mm. code in in the project build files because it's just code, and yep. I've seen some horrors, and so I've been I've been I've been traumatized by it, which is which is why I I understand its need, and yes, there there's. Uh, so one application, when, when I was working at Apple, we were working on an internal cloud build build system. And so they needed, they needed Gradle. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to put iTunes, you know, deploy that thing and build that thing, you're, you're going to need Gradle. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm like you, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of like, tell me if it's right or wrong because there's an XML schema. And yes, XML isn't, isn't perfect. And there's, there's all sorts of issues mm -hmm. with, with that. It can be a bit verbose. Um, and plugins may not be as easy to write as, as we'd like, but um, but like in the you... case of like an upgrade, uh, so exactly. just take that like Gradle's gives you that ability to customize, yeah. But it doesn't give you a consistency when I go from team to team, project to project. Yep. Everybody can kind of do their own thing, and that's part of its strength. So when I work with teams that are upgrading with Gradle, one of the things that we end up one of the patterns that we do is. We remove all the unnecessary stuff mm -hmm. from the Gradle file, and then right. we run the upgrades. Then right. we run the recipe, and then we put it back in. Like right. That's literally the pattern that we're doing. Yep. Uh, but we don't have to do that. All we have to do right here is copy that that shell, copy that command line, and you can run it right in, inside of your project. You can run mm -hmm. that command line and let it go to work. It knows how to upgrade from Shrimboot 2.6 to 3.1. Yep. 
So notice, so so one thing that, that I just realized is it's going to try to run Maven, but I use the Maven wrapper. Yep. So dot slash I'm going to change that. Yep. And I've sw I've switched I've switched all my projects to use the Maven wrapper yep. because, um, especially when I'm doing teaching or coaching, it's so much easier for for them to to just use the Maven wrapper. Yep. In instead of trying to install and upgrade, of course, with SDK man, that stuff is relatively straightforward. But yeah. then if they don't have SDK man installed, then they got to do, do that stuff. Big fan of SDK man, and now you're reminding me to go look, do my SDK update, and see if there's a new version of. Java that I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Liberica's new uh, 21.0.1 plus 15 is one that has plus 15 crack support. Oh, so that's what I'm looking for. And I don't think it's been updated yet. All right, so let's see what it did here. Wow. So, <laughs> it did quite a few changes. No, not, not a lot, a lot. Let's see. So change the palm. So it knows how to upgrade from yeah. 2.6 to 2.7, 2.7 to 3. To seven. And it's going to do them in order. So it's a nested yeah. recipe. It knows how to do them in order. And also, then a bunch of changes. Your date formatter. So the date format changes. Uh, you can see that it picked up on those. And it says, oh, OK, we've made some changes here uh, in your test and in the class. Fabricator controller. So this is annoying to me. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yep. Um, I actually, I don't, you know, there's enough magic in Spring, huh. where it's like, I, I want the at auto wired on my constructor to to tell the reader when they when they when they're looking at it that this is the one that even if it's the default one that a Spring can figure out. Oh, I I know that this is the one is gonna. Uh, it's going to call, but I actually like auto wired, um, even if it's already. Yeah. So that's figured the out. nice thing is you don't have to take these, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're, it's not doing any commits. We can go back and we can look at yeah. the diff yep. and we can see exactly what's happened. Uh, and I will say that there are some dependencies that this will add to your palm. Right. And I normally just take out like the glass fish one. Yep. Uh, we'll probably see, uh, but yeah, it's, so it's, it's nice good. that um, I use JUnit five, but I've, I used JUnit four for so long that um, my force of habit of creating my tests as being public and my test methods as being public. When JUnit five came out, you didn't need to do that anymore. Uh, so it's nice that that the test should not be public. Uh, yeah, Simon points out Simon uh, is awesome. Uh, yep. I, I hope you guys get to meet someday. Uh, he says the recipe composition is also available. Yes, yeah. So, so I actually used um, way back. Uh, I actually have a video of me do doing some of the open rewrite stuff to upgrade a, a Spring Boot 1.5 project to Spring Boot 2. Point whatever at the time. Yeah. Uh, so I have an, a, an old video that perhaps I should take down, but but basically uh, uh, it works. I, it... I, I, I've been using open rewrite for for a while and and yeah. following it and. Um, uh, it's there's some really nice stuff you can do if you if you really get get into it. Yeah, so yeah. thanks for pointing that out, Simon. So the, you know, this recipe. Hopefully, this works and and your test pass and everything works and we're good to go. Uh, and again, feedback from the community. Uh, somewhere between fifteen percent. Like if you've got you know your enterprise org, startup org, and you're trying to stay current. When they first learn about open rewrite and I first show them this particular recipe, mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, I've been doing this for about a year, right? Since right. Spring Boot 3 came out. And about 15% is on the low end. 15% of their portfolio was able to upgrade automatically using this recipe. And the high end was 70% mm. of their, you know, so they were just able to go, click the button and go and 70% of their stuff is upgraded. Normally when we do the upgrade, we show like, hey, here's the other, we didn't just get to the latest and greatest, which is like your security, right? Oh, and now I get patches, right? right. It's not, it's not that you get all the benefits that go along with the upgrade. And we show them like your performance and uh, latency and all that other stuff. So now your, your application should be ready to go. And now I would say run your tests. Yeah. It's got to finish downloading everything. Right. Cause I don't think I've, 
had 315 on this machine before. <laughs> so there Fantastic. we go. Fantastic. So I, I do this, this exercise so often that I kind of, you know, the first thing that, that tells me that 315 is available is the recipe. Right. 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 Like that's the thing that, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, 3.15 came out today. And there it is. Now it's doing all the good indexing. So that command that you just ran, I had that set up as an alias mm -hmm. because I do it so much. Like it just right. says part of my normal day to day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I kind of struggle with where that responsibility lies. Like for me, it's a nice enough tool that I can just do and have it automated locally. But I think there's a lot of like platform teams that want developers to run, run this and then this and then this and then this and run all these things. Right before you send it to our pipeline. And I'm kind of, I think it can't be one or the other. I think it has to be both is my, where I've landed. Like maybe I don't want to do a git commit every time to get all the validation. I want to be able to run it locally, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but if I missed and if I didn't run that sneak or uh, the upgrade, then I want my platform to catch it. Like don't let it go without having all the, the bells and whistles. So that responsibility, you're like, I've seen it both ways, but I think that it should be in both places. All right, we got all tests passing and we got 315. Awesome. Fantastic. So let's see. Um, let's see what the, the changes tests? it made. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this is, this is the one. So it took out my auto wired, yeah. but I'm going to put it back because I like my auto wired. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to. Um, what did it do here? Uh, maybe some for... format. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Because uh, it used to be you had to specify the value because yep. it wouldn't have the information at runtime. Yep. Um, now so this you, is a, you don't. A, yeah, this is a spring man event. This is a spring upgrade. I was like, hey, yeah, you don't need that. Well, I think it's re it's related to to version of Java. I forget which version it used. It used to be if you turned on debug during compilation, then it would put the symbols in the runtime and it would be accessible through reflection. Um, at some point, I forget when that became probably with easier. Java seventeen is my guess. Possibly, and I, I don't, possibly. I, mean, I don't go deep on the JVM, yeah. uh, but I know that Spring Boot three. Uh, rebased with Java 17. Right. So, but I'm pretty sure that was available before because I have, I have probably, it might have even been 11, okay. I, I, I want to say. But anyway, it's nice that it, that it yeah. noticed that because that's and, no yeah. longer needed. So that's cool. And did the same thing here, of course. Yep. So cool. Um, great. Let's that looks good. Is. That's what else. It's Remove bigger. public from your test. Yeah, so it took out public in the class name and public for here. Um, and that's pretty much all it did, which is yeah, that's, totally uh, fine. You know, I have I have my my teammates whispering in my ears about don't use public unless you need to use public. Like leave it, leave it not public until yeah. you need it to yeah. be public. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for uh, tests, it, it sort of doesn't matter because no, you're not, nobody, you don't have code calling your tests. So it's really more of a, Hey, we don't need it. It clutters things up. So let's, let's reduce the visual, the visual noise. Yeah. Um, but absolutely for code default to, to, to not public. Absolutely. That's something I've learned over the years. And we got more tests getting rid of public. One of these days I, I want, I'll, I'll run the, this specific recipe, the, the JUnit 5, 5 stuff on some other projects, because um, I've got a lot of publics that we can get rid of. Hey, it yeah. saves what? One, two, three, four, five, six. It saves seven seven characters per per, per line. Um, so that's all, all more tests. Fantastic. And good old ArcUnit test. And more tests. And the version. And let's see. So it added That's the, one. the JAXB runtime, right? Um, mm. Do I need that? I forget what I, I remember when when I first upgraded something to that that was added, but I forget yeah. what that's used by. You 
Take it out and run your yeah. test. Yeah. Let's see. Let me go into the file. That's the, that's the that's the best thing, right? So the other thing that I find myself saying a lot is like, the more mature your tests are, mm -hmm. the easier this process is going to be. Yep. Everybody's like, oh, well, how are we gonna, how do we know if it's going to work? Like, how do we know if this upgrade is going to work in production? Well, how do you make any change and know that's going to work in production, yeah. right? If you don't have tests. If you don't have tests, you're going to have to do it manually. Yeah, and then you're going to be nervous about making any changes. And this is how legacy code becomes legacy code. Um, it's, it's that, it's that lack of confidence that really hurts your ability to, to keep the code sort of fresh and, and new. And, 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 uh, there's a term that Eric Evans in domain driven design uses called supple. I love that idea of like supple code. That's just easily changeable, but it's comfortable to work in. And, and if you're scared to make a change, um, and basically your suggestion to like, well, comment it out and try it out is very much a TDD mindset, a very experimental mindset. Yeah. All right. Guess we don't need it. Fantastic. Hey, everybody's showing up. This is so good. Like I said, I've been streaming a lot more lately and it's been fun uh, having the community. Uh, I enjoy, like I said, and I always say, and I, I've always enjoyed having you like as my coworker uh, on the stream. So that's just what I'm trying to do. Yep. Uh, a lot of times I'm not, you know, chatting or I'm you know, even cleaning up my messy office. Like just to have somebody there, uh, it's nice. And I, I remember a handful of times where I was like, what do you think about this? And you'd give me a two and a half minute thought. And I was like, yep. thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I'm trying to do that same thing that I got from you. Like just, I want to be there as, uh, help somebody out. Sometimes we're going to learn something. We're going to show something cool, but just to be present and yeah. yeah in the same kind of mindset, like, Hey, we're remote. You know, I don't have somebody, you know, down the hall. I'm not right, the right. passive stuff. And right. that's what I liked. That's what I like doing. I like always having some live streams on and uh, live coding is my favorite thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I love it. I can, I can do it passively and that's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, <laughs> I'm glad to see everybody here showing up. Yeah. So Simon, yeah, I love ArcUnit. I've been using ArcUnit forever. Um, so my ArcUnit test, uh, is basically and this is and this is actually can be cleaned up i'm not going to do that now but basically this can now be like much much simpler because there's um although i find the terminology that argument uses for some of the predefined architectures to be a little bit uh, it, it hurts yeah. hurts me as a as a very pedantic person um because they call it uh onion and onion and hexagonal are not the same thing they're very similar uh but they're not but anyway this what this what this test does is basically ensures that i don't have um, dependencies in, in, in the wrong direction and that uh, hexagonal can be looked at as a layered system. So basically this, this test just enforces that. So I don't, even though I teach this stuff, you never know when you make a mistake and, and you want your test to catch stuff, right? That's the whole point of having them. So yeah, I love arcing it. Fantastic. All right, so success. Success. Are we feeling good? Like we feel like we did it? I, it, it all looks good. That's wonderful. So let's go ahead and actually commit it. Uh, so I'm gonna ask a question. Um, I noticed that you have the version there. How do you upgrade your versions? <laughs> oh, uh, I want I want a better way to to do this in some kind of automated thing, but I haven't figured out. Um, like there are two different kinds of versions. Like this one is like I bumped just because I've made a significant change, even though it's not a significant functional change. So maybe mm -hmm. it really doesn't deserve a new version. But I, I manually do it when when I make when I make a a, a functional change. Um, but for my more like my Ensembler app, I actually really wanted to do a new version every time I deploy. And I've played around with some things, and I haven't. And I wasn't satisfied, and I haven't looked at it in, in a while. Um, but it'd be really nice to to every time it actually gets 
push to GitHub and then successfully run all the tests and then successfully, and then basically then deployed. Um, like it fails the test on, on the GitHub action that I'd want it to, to not, not bump up that version. Uh, so that's the long, long answer. Um, I, I'm going to go look. I have, in the past, I used um, the GitHub SHA was the yeah. version. That's yeah. all that I cared about. Like, hey, this yeah. is what it is. Uh, but yeah. it's hard to like track then like changes and yeah. do change logs and all that kind of stuff made it really hard. So as as a you know startup mode and just like get go forward, get to production, it worked yep. for a while. Yeah. Uh, and then as I started learning more, uh, I'm going to another one of my GitHub repositories. I have this uh, initializer plus plus. You know, I talk about having this pattern of I want to be able to do it locally and have it on my platform. Right. The the conventions around like versioning. Um, I'm gonna look it up. I don't remember what it's called exactly, but I have this plugin for Maven that only it, it creates the version. So I set my version to zero. That's what's in mm -hmm. the POM file, and then it uses this plugin to determine the version based on the GitHub tag. Mm. So if there's a tag there, it, it gets that tagged version. So right. 0.0.2. Right. Uh, if it's not a tag, I can say that it's 0 .0 0 0.0.2 dash snapshot. Mm -hmm. I can say like, hey, it's close to or it's dirty. Like, hey, it hasn't been committed. So I have this like consistent way of versioning. Mm. And then my version is always managed by the GitHub tag. So it's just consistent. I don't have the manual um, process of editing the, the palm file. Right. I don't, I'm not a real big fan of the Maven convention for releases. Yeah. I haven't Maven done a lot release. of releases yeah. with Maven and every time I look, because I want to take a look at it, I'm like, Oh, never mind. Yeah. I think it was like three commits show up in your yeah. repository yep. each time you yep. do a release. Yeah. Prepare for release. For, yeah. Prepare yeah. for next for the, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Tooks, welcome back. Yes, we're doing some some Java today. I was doing Python yesterday, uh, and uh, yeah, we're today we're doing Java. In spring, we're upgrading. We're making sure that everybody's on the latest and greatest. And tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and there's going to be some new releases. So on Friday, I'll, I'm going to ping Ted, and I'm going to say, hey, like, have you ran the recipe again? Like, let's let's get it up to the latest and greatest. That's one of the metrics that I try to get people to think about. Is like, hey, when 3.2 comes out. How long is it going to take you to get your app to production? Yep. Uh, I don't have a mechanism that says, oh, yeah, there's a new release. Go and run the recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I do a commit, right. I want to make sure that you're on the latest and greatest. Yep. So just like what I'm doing with that command line, uh, as, as I'm doing changes, the goal would be to have some automation that's going and checking mm -hmm. you know, when there's a release or have some event. Like, hey, yeah, a new Spring Boot version comes out. Like, go and fire it off across all yeah. the yeah. that's that's possible i'm just not there yet yeah yeah so should we uh 315 i assume works with java 21 right it does yeah so should we upgrade to java may as well upgrade before you do that um yeah. how about do this run your tests do it from the command line see how long your tests take hmm. with java 17. throw a time in for that command don't do that a lot. So what do I do? Just say time? Yep, time, space, and then do your NVNW clean test. I don't usually run it from the command line. What's the clean test? I'm I'm I'm, I'm so out of practice. Whoops. Oh. I forgot, I, and I misspelled Maven. That's on me. There we go. So just you know. It's a, it's a not real yeah, scientific, yeah. but yeah. Hey, this one, it took 18.27 seconds. Now upgrade to Java 21. Let's run the same thing. Yeah. So I saw, I saw this, uh, in, I saw this commit and I saw, I think it was even you, Simon, it was, it was, uh, posting about this and, um, I, I have to say I'm, I'm like just thrilled that loom is 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 finally here and that spring will be able to to take advantage of it and 
we can stop talking about reactive. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think reactive yeah, has has its place, yep. but but I think it's it, it's going to be re vastly reduced uh, in 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 sort of the, the use cases that it that it needs to cover. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there? I assume should I run the open rewrite to upgrade the twenty one? I don't. Um, I don't think it's going to do much. I actually I don't know if it if there I've never done that. Um, normally. I think if you, uh, let me think here uh, from experience. I think if you switch to Java 21 and then you rerun that same command, I think it'll upgrade your POM to Java 21, but I'm not sure. I'd like to see that. So if you SDK use Java, which which Java are you using right now? It's, uh... Uh, I I am at twenty one twenty one oh one. Okay. Oh, so I didn't upgrade it automatically. Um, yeah. So, so it upgraded it. It upgraded it to. Uh, it upgraded Java Spring. 17. It didn't upgrade the the, the yeah. Java. Um, Was it supposed to? Uh, no, I don't think okay. so. Um, and now could... you're making me think because I've been doing these demos and I'm wondering if if I even went back and changed the Spring's Java version mm -hmm. to 21 mm -hmm. when I was doing this. I don't think I have been doing that. So, yeah, let's see if there is a recipe for upgrading the Java version. Let's see. Upgrade. Migrate to Java 21. This is in... That's 7 to 8. Uh, there's a recipe. I'll throw it out here into the comments. Boop. Here's the recipe that I found. Change Maven Java version property values to 21. Mm -hmm. So there's a recipe uh, just for that. This one. So here's the migrate to Java 21. Yep. That's the one we and want. And then if you scroll down, it'll show you all the recipes that are included yep. in there. Let's go grab that. Yep. Let's run it. Let's run so 18.27 was what we had before, but we were yep. using Java 21, yep. uh, but we didn't upgrade the Maven uh, version. So let's just see if this makes a difference. Carl, thanks for joining. And we're doing the we're doing the recipe because we want to, you know, I want these things to be automated. Maybe, yeah, maybe that. Yeah, we could have just yeah yeah. So Carl, we could have just changed the, the number, yeah. but I was curious what what else the um, what else the recipe might do. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm it looks like it looks like yeah. that's what it just did. It's like all right, let's just change yeah. the upgrade. <laughs> so let's see. Yep, that's all it did. That's fine. And let's, uh, um, Gebs about the one hour a day of tutoring training, like just do it. Like every rep is my answer. You want to get better at anything, do more of it. Okay. What happened here? Wait, the test failed. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it didn't refresh the, let me refresh. Change this. IntelliJ should have refreshed that. It did, but it didn't change that. Okay, let's go do that. There you go. Oh, interesting. Uh, it didn't update argument. Yeah, so that's why. Um, I'm gonna. 
I, okay, I'm gonna take some. I think we here. should take note of this yep. and okay. and and uh, have them add that to the upgrade to twenty one. Um, not sure what what where it would fit, but this is because uh, ArcUnit uh, didn't add twenty one support until like one point oh, but I think the latest is. Uh, Latest. I think it's 1.01. Let's go take a look. Um, so there's a similar issue with Lombok, right? Lombok. Well, of course, support, yes. Um, even it didn't support even Java 17 until like 18.5 or something like that. Right. And you know, you you find these things that you run into, but the coolest thing is that we were, and I get goosebumps because I get excited about this stuff. The coolest thing is like, we were talking about it and I'd ran into it enough where I'm like, hey, and I, I just, I hadn't opened up the issue, but I was talking about it on spring office hours mm -hmm. and Tim to beat was there. And he's like, oh yeah, we got that. Right. It's already there. Yep, right. yep, yep, I saw that, yep. Okay. Yeah, so those guys, those guys are great. So yeah. uh, it looks like they changed the artifact as well. So let's go grab that. So Hold I'm on. gonna take a note of this, um, and yeah, like my mindset uh, is when I run into this, especially if I'm building my career or you know my enterprise on top of open source software. Mm -hmm. um, one of the cultures, one of the those kind of patterns that I see is the people that are willing to open up an issue when they find it. Whether they have yep. a, a, a fix, a PR for it or not, right, the people right. that are willing to open up an issue when they find yep. an issue yep. are doing better. Yes. They are figuring out where, figuring out how, how to describe, how to write better, how to communicate better. They're moving forward faster. Uh, so this is one of those patterns that, yeah, I want to I wanna model and I want to show. So I'm going to capture this and uh, uh, open up an issue. Says, oh, they changed the upgrades of dependencies. Yeah, maybe so maybe so maybe. I don't know if they have a recipe for for Arcuit upgrade. Um, maybe not. But that's that's what's needed here because actually there were there were a bunch of changes. Uh, and you know that that's the kind of thing. In, this is in yeah. my head. This is kind of the thing that's simple enough where I could go and write that recipe and I could contribute yep. something back. So I'm yeah. like, oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah. So, what did they what did they change for for that? Um, go to releases. So, I think in the yeah. So, one zero changed a bunch of things. Got it. Um, I'm not sure I want to spend time trying to figure that out. No. Oh, so here, analyze classes. Did it just change the, I wonder if it just changed the package. Let's see. I do not see a recipe for it. And then this is the thing, right? Like, oh, well, there's no recipe and we're stuck. And the thing that I, I'd say is like, oh, wait, scoot on, continue on, you know, get the benefit of what you've got. You don't have to upgrade this now. If you've got time, sweet. But I'll bet you there's a bunch of other stuff that you can upgrade in the meantime. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's, on this yeah, one. let's, let's, if this were me on my own, I would, I would go, go yep. push forth, but, uh, I think this is offline from what we want. So let's yep. go and um, let's go and let's roll back. Yep. But that was a fun. But that's cool that that uh, uh, we found something that that open yep. rewrite can can that you or I can can yeah. help uh, open rewrite get a recipe for arguing an upgrade because I'm not I'm sure I'm not the only one at least Simon and I are are, are using arguing <laughs> yeah well arguing is an arguing it's really part of you know the spring modulus right exactly I was just about to say I mean it's it's a it's a core piece of that yeah. so 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 for me right that 
that makes perfect sense to go and do that if yep. Yep. if I want to help out. But yeah, this is the, the same advice. I don't want right. people to get stuck on the one upgrade uh, where, oh, hey, okay, I can't get to Java 21, but you got to Java 17, you got to Spring Boot 3.15, uh, you're getting tons of value. Exactly. Let's yeah. go on to the next one. Let's see what yeah. else we can move up because there is performance benefits. There is other benefits you're getting um, even though you're not. Yeah, I mean, just if, you know, if this was a Java 11 project or or... Yeah, Java eight or even a Java, well maybe yeah, not maybe. Java six, but no, Java no, no. eight. So um, I can I, I without naming names, uh, I have worked you know in the last year I've worked with companies that are still using Java five, uh, and yeah. I've got on that computer that's right there I've got uh, Web Logic running, uh, and Logic. one of those, you know not with the open rewrite but there's another project that we might look at in a little bit, uh, the Spring Boot migrator, that mm -hmm. can take your EJB, your JEE uh, applications that are running on something like WebSphere or WebLogic, and you can actually migrate them and convert them over to a Spring Boot. So tests are passing. Oh, really? You're running as a Spring Boot app instead of needing the middleware like WebLogic or WebSphere. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Isn't it amazing? Like mind blown. That's that's that is incredible. Yeah, and I I will I will say the joke uh, that. Honestly, what we put out, um, we're, we're kind of better at upgrading JEE apps over to Spring Boot than we are at staying on with our recipes for Spring Boot to Spring Boot. But we're working on it. And we have, we have help. So that's wonderful. So Carl mentions the display dependency updates. Look at all that stuff is downloading. Oh my gosh. Um, ah, do you ever deal with, what is this? Oh, that's cool. That oh, that's nice. Cool. Um, Wait, so I use, I use, I use, uh, I use caffeine for, yeah. for caching because caffeine is, is, is a, is a nice little cash, uh, cash mechanism. So it looks like there's an update there. Um, and I use this. Uh, so one thing you may not have noticed is uh, when I was running Format Hero, one of the one of the cool things I added, it was one of those. Oh, let's try let's let's try this out. Is this identifier when when I'm using the deployed version? Um, it's one of those things where if we're collaborating on on our date time formats, yep. which is kind of a ridiculous thing, but but the idea is uh, so it generates these human readable IDs that are, that are unique. Um, and so cool. I can say, hey, Deshaun, go to go to formathero.dev and use the ID average Stingray 56. And instead of some, you know, really long UUID, that's impossible yep. to read. That's so that's what, what that's yeah, what this totally. does. Oh, I feel like I've got something else from K K K Kugler. I feel like I've got something else from that in my stuff somewhere, but let me write that down real quick because I like that. So yeah, so this is definitely useful to run, I think, as, as part of, uh, so thanks for mentioning that, Carl, um, yes. as part of, you know, the recipes are only to look at the stuff they're going to look for, Yeah. Uh, but you may have have other things. So if there was a arch unit recipe that, you know, you would run them in order, like, hey, I want to do these, right. and you can kind of like stack them. Right. And okay. as you find the the patterns in your repositories mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're gonna know like oh yeah i gotta add this one to my list remove right. duplicates remove right. class fish etc yeah. yeah. cool all right so i think we can declare the easy one format hero done we did it uh and did i push it i pushed it so it's actually probably deployed let's go check it out And oh, I didn't redirect the the domain. So so tell me. I have to go find where it's deployed. Where do you think? Where do you deploy things? So I have I have three different places I deploy things. Um, 
uh, one of them is uh, I still have some stuff on Heroku that I want to migrate off because it's getting a little expensive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Railway is where I have my Ensembler tool. Railway, where I have... Um, did it deploy Format Hero? Should not have done that. So I pointed, so I was trying out this new one that I think was maybe even mentioned in one of one of your streams or somebody's stream mentioned uh Kiob um as a oh as a, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, Thomas. Yes, Thomas, right. Yeah. Yep. Um and that one it's very much, you know, these are all platform as a service, right? Cuz yep. I don't want to deal with like AWS and, and even and Azure is too expensive for 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 a little guy like me. Um, I don't have cloud money. I have Raspberry Pi. And uh, what's that? I have Raspberry Pi money. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so Railway's nice. Uh, so it's platform as a service, and it, and right now it does everything that I needed from Heroku, and, including you know hosting a Postgres database and and things like that, and it just works really well. Um, and so Kiab is, is very similar, although it's a little bit behind. The database stuff is not quite there. Uh, and so I was trying it out, and I basically had deployed Format Hero to it. Um, let's go. I'm over here taking notes. Like, I'm, it's not being recorded, but it is being recorded. We're hanging out. Like, one of the things, that, one of the other patterns that I like to adopt is, like, there I like is. to record these conversations so I don't have to take a bunch of notes. I record it, get a transcript from it, and then I've got it and keep it. And I can dump that into one of my LLMs, large language models. Yes. I can, I can, yes. ask, I can ask my own context questions. Right. Hey, yep. have you ever talked about railway? Yep. Yeah, that's something I want to do because I've got um, yeah. 600 hours of streaming video. Yeah. And I'm like, where the hell did I do X? I know I did this change of this. Where did I do it? And it's all now. The stuff is fast enough. I can do. I can do it locally. I can. I can, can do get it transcribed locally. Uh, so, I don't have to, so we're doing and, that. Um, so now being able to to dump it into an LLM where I can say, "Hey, where where did this happen?" I, that that'll be nice. Yeah. So just having that. So uh, Josh Long and I uh, last week we worked with Duan Lightfoot. Uh, who is Lab Every Day on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And Duan is a developer advocate over at AWS. Mm -hmm. uh, he made this YouTube analysis assistant for his YouTube videos. Uh -huh. And what he what it does is it goes and grabs the transcript mm -hmm. from his YouTube video, uh, gives him a description, gives him a summary mm -hmm. of it, gives him the SEO tags that he should put on his <laughs> YouTube video. Yep. Yep. And now it also generates a thumbnail using Dolly, get generates an AI oh, that's thumbnail cool. where he doesn't have to do anything. You just point to the URL to the YouTube video and it gives you everything that you just copy in and edit, paste. And of course, we're going to automate that part too, where it updates the video in right. your, you know, using the API in your YouTube. So boom, you get this uh, cool. I, I need the, I need the thumbnail video. generation because that's the, that's the part I actually really find the part that I never did. And I never even <laughs> spent time, even though you know, Dan Vega's, you know, got all this, like, yeah, you got to do the thumbnails. And this is part of his thing. I never spent any time on it. And last week, when I was first taking Dewan's project for a spin, uh, I grabbed a video that I that had been out for four days. Mm -hmm. uh, I had 24 views. And I, do, I have my normal, like, I'm going to share the video on these places. Yep. I had 24 yep. views in four days. Um, I, I ran it through his analysis tool and got all the stuff. I edited the same video. I just put the description, the summary, the SEO tags, and the uh, and the thumbnail, and now it's at whatever 300 views four days later. Like overnight, it had 200 views, you know, 10x whatever nice. we were doing. So I was nice. like, okay, proof done. <laughs> like I'm doing it, and then I showed that to Josh. A little Josh A/B like, test there, yeah. Yep. And then Josh was like, yeah, we got to do it. Like it, it just works so great. But it originally it was, well, the other piece that it does is like it says, from the transcript, you can ask it like what's the best 30 second clip for like a short or a TikTok? Uh, and it gives you yes. a 30 second clip that you can be like, yeah, this part where you talked about this, right. grab that because it's a joke and the joke is funny. Like, right. Right. It's just, it's, it's great. So we're having a lot of fun with that. Yeah. yeah making this whole job easier. 
for the videos and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this. yeah, because I've I've got a lot. Yeah, so I've got like hundreds of hours. Uh, I um so I've been using I use been using Descript for for a long time, yes. and they recently have bumped up the, the the AI stuff that that they've added, and so now I can <clears throat> dump it in, and it does most of of what you describe. Like it'll generate um it'll generate a blog post, it'll generate uh, a YouTube summary, including the timestamps for all the different chapters. Um, and I, I did it for, for I, I uploaded a, a recent stream, uh, and the timestamps it generated were like, oh, what happened here? Because there was like a big, big gap between the chapters, and I started looking at it, and, um, and I realized, oh, this is where I, I, I was challenged by my uh, viewers. They, they redeemed the right code without a test. <laughs> and so I went off and 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 wrote um, uh, basically a, an implementation of storing information instead of in a database the easy way. I did it the hard way by storing it as JSON in a file, and that was without tests. And as you might be able to predict, it went horribly wrong. <laughs> like it was, it was, it. I ended the stream and it was it just wasn't working. Um, I think I eventually got it to work and I'll have to yeah. look at the next stream, but it was one of those like, oh, that's why there was this big gap because because I went off the rails. <laughs> that's really, really neat. Um, I have also used Descript. That's what I've used in the past. Um, but again, like the, the extra time, uh, I was looking for like, hey, I'm done. Click the button and right. do all the things. Right. Uh, with Descript, from what I understand, I still had to download the video, upload it. What I like about Descript is I can remove all the ums and ahs. Yes, uh, yes. That. Plus I can also, on the export, I can have the, the voices. So yep. I got the speaker name. So yep. as I've done many, many of the the spring office hours, it now knows who Dan is and who Deshaun is. Right. I don't have to exactly. tell it who this right. is. It's just like, right. oh yeah, that's Dan. So yep. that's been wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So I, I run a book club, <clears throat> and so every, every week uh, we, we're on Zoom for two hours. We're currently reading um, uh, Learning Domain Driven Design, and um, it's great. So basically, we record it, and uh, Descript generates the transcript and the subtitles, um, things like that. And you can give it a glossary of like, here are the common things that I, terms that I use, like DTO and IntelliJ, and things that it would normally not not get get correct, uh, and so it corrects those and and. Um, and I've been playing around with the, hey, can you summarize the book discussion? And it, it comes up with some, sometimes it gets a little off. Uh, it's like, well, that's not quite what we did. But um, but it's been it's been really nice for, especially for people who can't make every every session to be able to catch up and, and not have to watch the two hours of, of discussion. Yeah. yeah, you can go and, you know, hit the, the fast mode, uh, but you can also, you can just share the transcript. Yeah, so I, I share the transcript, I share the, and the subtitles are there, and I publish using, since I paid more for that, you can, I published the, the two-hour thing using Descript, so Descript has its own, it synchronizes the transcript with the video as, as the video is playing, um, so that, that's, that's you really published nice. to YouTube from no, Descript? No, since uh, it publishes to Descript's own, oh, gotcha. own service, um, and so that means a lot of the, the, rendering work that or whatever work it has to do is is not happening on my computer so basically i just tell it yeah. do the thing and and it creates an unlisted link so because for the um, we have our discussions where we don't where we're like if you're part of the book club you can you can find out but if you're not we're not gonna we're not gonna put it up on yeah. on youtube very cool so um yeah, so we deployed and and this is all still working and uh this is up on railway Fantastic. And I love uh, you take stuff to production. Yeah. That's an important part. All right. So let's switch over to Ensembler. So uh, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with this tool, so I, so it's with the video that I've been up that I uploaded yesterday um, to YouTube, I, I've been up been well behind in uploading my streams. Since I don't normally stream to YouTube, I normally stream just to Twitch. And then I basically 
want to do some very, very light editing before I push it up on YouTube. It, it does mean that I don't, <clears throat> uh, that it takes me a while. So I just uploaded episode five of me developing Ensembler, which was uh, like two and a half years ago. So yep. it'll be a while before I get, get up to date. So right, that's the kind of, that's kind of the, uh, how do you simplify that, right? The thing that I'm learning uh, across the board is not just in this developer habit, like the people that are automating yeah. the boring stuff yeah. are the people that are able to do more of the important stuff. So, and there's a trade off, right? Like how much time yeah. do you want to spend automating this thing? How much is it really going to save you? Well, like you're two and a half years behind, yeah. right? So yeah. how much value is there uh, if you had you know, spent a hundred hours on, on the automation? Uh, how much time is there? And I know that it's hard, right? And that's one of the things that's kind of kept me uh, at arm's length from streaming more often. It's like, it, there's a lot of work and people don't understand how much work that is. Yeah. But the thing you just mentioned is like the idea of on Twitch is where I'll do my live stream and then I can edit it and then deliver an, an edited version to YouTube. Descript could make that really, really easy. You could yeah. cut out the, the sloppy parts and from the transcript, you could be boop, boop, boop. Uh, you could ask the AI, like, what are the boring parts? Which parts should I cut out? And go. There's a there's a ton of opportunity here to take some of these tools. And I I put all of this AI stuff. I'm, I'm in my head. It's just the new spreadsheet. Yeah. It's going to be so common. These mm -hmm. models are going to be so common that it's just the new spreadsheet. You know, uh, what is the? Uh, I forget the one tricky thing from Excel. Anyways, like, yeah, it's just the models. Which models do you have? You yep. have access to it and go. And it's not even, we're not even going to think about it. Yeah, what's what's slowing me down is is I don't even do, like, I yes, I load it into Descript because it makes it uh, easy to do everything I need. But I, I don't even, like, <clears throat> for the streams, I, there are some streams, like, uh, I'll do some, some pretty fine editing. Um, but these, I just need to to get them up. And actually the thing that takes the longest time is just rendering an upload. Um, and that is like, yeah, I can automate it, but I'm only going to render and upload one at a time. So, so automating isn't the problem. It's with the actual, so I'm glad you mentioned um, uh, the automated thumbnail generation, because that's the thing that actually yeah. I need to automate. Because uh, especially like I was looking at, it's like, okay, I did these other thumbnails um so i did these thumbnails and i'm like where the heck did i do those thumbnails what application did i use to yep. create them because i wanted a consistent look and i realized yep. oh i remember which tool it was oh that's painful because what, what i had to do is i basically took you know took a snapshot from from the stream and then took that and then overlaid it with things and it's like that's too much work <laughs> Um, and so if I could automate that, and I'm sure I could uh, somehow. Show you some of the output. Go to the, um, the, and so what I did is I basically went into Canva. Yeah. Uh, and I just did it in Canva. Yep. And if I could, if I could do it guess. one step further of go just to, saying, here's the video. And do yeah, it. It's at Deshaun on YouTube. And I just want to show you, I did it for a couple of them. I haven't gone through and automated all of them. Uh, but if you go to, uh, yeah, scroll down past live streams, uh, you can see uh, which ones were uh -huh. like that one. And it and it generated it purely from the transcript of the show. Now, this one over here, the this third one, the YouTube analysis assistant, mm -hmm. I took the the headshots of me, Josh and Duan. And I said, here's me. Here's Josh. Here's Duan. Here's the transcript. And that's what it came up with. Oh, neat. I was very, very pleased. I'm going to give that a shot because if I can, because I'm generating the transcripts anyway, because I like to to use the script to generate it. Because like I said, it, it it knows my glossary and language yeah. better than YouTube does. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so I'll already have the transcripts. And so if I can just say here, generate a transcript for that. One um, of the um, early on. That's cool. Uh, back when I was on Mixer. Uh, one of the, one of the guys that I watched and I watched him code it, he was coding 
this thing for the transcripts where it was pulling out words like Kubernetes and IntelliJ. Mm -hmm. And and it, he was building this, yeah, this bucket of the words being spoken you mm -hmm. know, from the audio. Right. To, here's how all the different ways I say Kubernetes, Kate, right. IntelliJ, right. Right, idea. Like, and he was building up this glossary so that when he uploaded his transcript or his video, it knew how to pull those things out. So he showed me some of these things. I was like, and that was one of my favorite streams to watch as he was developing this. Mm. And every stream, you know, new technology comes in. Right. You do it, you pull out those words, you feed it back, and then it transcribes right. and it has the ability to pull out those words. But he had a nice little automation around that. But like, mm. what were the new words that came in this show? Right. That it didn't do right. And he's right. like, boop, boop, boop. And then he refed it and then it worked. I was like, just nice. Boop. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah, but I'm just scratching the surface. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So if I can automate the the thumbnails, um, then I'm then I'll Same then it's just a matter of then it's just a matter of 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 yeah. rendering, letting my computer render. And... Yeah. So and that's now all done through ChatGPT, right? Or yep. yeah, the OpenAI has that, but you don't have to use OpenAI. Right. What we're doing is we're making it so you can run those models locally. So you right. don't have to go use their service. A lot right. of the models are, are public. Yeah. yeah. I know we're I know we're on a bit of a tangent, but it's it's totally fine. Um and while we're on this tangent, uh have you seen um the uh make real So um, I don't have, the, but basically you you can use this. You can, uh, you know, create a UI. Say that you know here's my UI and here's a button, and it says you know create. You can have uh, make a basic. All right, go ahead. Uh, oh, I don't have my API key in here, so it may not let me do it. Yeah. So you basically send this to, uh, it'll, it'll send it, it'll basically take a snapshot, send it to, to, uh, chat GPT V, um, and then generate basically HTML tailwind <laughs> UI for it. Um, I have this running somewhere. I have to figure out which tab I'm in. Um, it might actually be on my laptop. Awesome. But uh, uh, it's it's fun to try out, and it's actually really nice because then you can say, "Well, make this larger, make this background green," and you can start commenting on it and yeah. and building it up. Um, and so the author Steve Ruiz uh, has a bunch of samples of this on uh, uh, on author? social media. Um, Steve Ruiz, R U I Z. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. And so you, this is the kind of stuff that like. I always thought of of you know this idea of a, of a, 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 a exoskeleton, right? You know, allows us to jump higher, faster, safer. I'd like to see more safer in, in this kind of stuff, but yep. you know, jump higher and faster. But it's still we're directing it, and and we're just more powerful because we're getting getting all this assistant. Because like you know, yes, I could I write the the HTML for this. Um, could I go into Chat GPT and describe it? Yes, I could, but it's actually really hard to describe. Uh, in a sense, you're describing an. Why would you describe an image so that it can basically just, like, just give it the image? Here's yeah. what I want it to look like. Go generate the the, the HTML, right. um, and that'll be really nice uh, to to incorporate into the you know uh, the workflow because because yeah. you know I could do this, but like it's. Like you're saying, it's like it's not the best use of my time. The the kitty looked over the Christmas tree. So let me uh, let me go grab this for a second. Oh wow, it's already filled up. What was filled up? Uh, I just want to check the 
before I put it on stream that it was okay to put it on stream. So getting back to, to Ensembler. <clears throat> so Ensembler is a tool that I created um, because one of the things I do with my community, uh, with people who've um, purchased my various courses, uh, is we run a weekly ensemble, basically group programming, uh, anywhere up to five people are participating and um, we're all connected in Zoom and we basically work on an app, uh, an application and are just constantly adding features using TDD, doing lots of refactoring. So really it's, it's one of the best ways to learn is to do and get immediate feedback from someone like me to say, hey, let's let's try this, let's try that. But also we they, everybody learns from everybody else. And so um, I think ensembling or what's sometimes called mob programming is is my favorite way as, as an educator to, to get people to really do deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is required to get better, but it it's not enough to just practice. You get need to get that feedback so that you know you're not learning the wrong thing. Um, so anyway, I needed a tool that <clears throat> would do things like, well, there's a capacity of five because more than five people, it, it, it starts to, to, to break down in terms of people's attention and, and, and things like that. And so I wanted a tool to, to help me create those and schedule those and also create a, uh, integrate with other services, like create a zoom, <clears throat> um, a zoom meeting for me. Cause I, Speaking of automation, it's like all the stuff that I had to do manually. I had to go into mm -hmm. Zoom, create a meeting, and I had to make sure I got the date and time right and, and put all the stuff in. And then I would have to send that Zoom link to people so that they could actually connect. Uh, and then uh, I, you know, people would say, oh, I can't make it. And so they'd have to tell me that they dropped out. And so I'd have to say, hey, no. And, and it was right. It, was, it wasn't a lot of work, but it was just a lot of tedious, tedious things. So I created an application um that that basically did this for me i did not so i watched you develop this i didn't realize that this was something that your community got as part of uh, yeah your your training and yeah like, yeah resource. that's amazing yeah and so um right now i'm only uh, i'm only doing it once a week but sometimes i'll do multiple ones and we have yeah. sort of different different you know sort of like a multiverse we we always start from from the application we built in in the course which is basically a blackjack casino game um and we we build on now it's multiplayer and now you can place bets and now well in this multiverse we did persistence in this multiverse we didn't and so we're going to actually do event sourcing for for uh starting the, this right, friday cool. um and so that's going to be really interesting uh because i haven't i haven't really done a lot with, with event sourcing but anyway so that's what this tool is um and it and and allows me to uh and <clears throat> the most recent features i added over the past couple of months was this ability to have uh, what we call spectators, um, where you're not <clears throat> in the rotation, so you don't get a chance at the keyboard or, or what's called navigating or, or directing. Uh, but there are people, but you you actually get quite a lot out of just observing, just oh, yeah. just just watching. Um, and so uh, again, it was one of those things where it's like for a long time I would be say, "Hey, we're filled up," but if you want to spectate, send me a direct message, and I'll send you the link. And yep. so it's, you know. It's like nope, and and so actually the uh, the episodes where I added this are actually st still on Twitch. Uh, eventually, they'll they'll get over to YouTube, but they're, they're on Twitch, and um, you know, and cool. so so TDD it, and but <clears throat> but it's on two point seven. <laughs> That's amazing. So so let's see if we can upgrade it. So let's let's, dig let's, in. let's go this for it. This is a great project. And so this since we and use a lot of time, a lot of effort. In this yeah. project, so it's not yes. trivial. Yeah, and so one of the things I've got, of course, is um, uh, lots of great tests. Uh, oh. And so, so I use Postgres. Um, so early on in the project, before test containers was a thing, yep. um, I used H2, right? Because that's what you did. That's what you did. Because, uh, uh, but then you know the pain, uh, and I'm using Flyway for for my uh, database migrations, and the pain of keeping two different schema definitions, H2 and, and Postgres in sync was not fun. And then when, um, when I was able to start using Docker and then test containers made that made that much easier, uh, it was it was just like, this is so fast, I don't I, I don't need to use H2.
So let's run all the tests. The tree. All right. So things are working. Yep. All the tests are passing. And <clears throat> there's some database tests in here, yet the whole thing ran in, in just a few seconds, which is just the the, the, the wonder of, of, of test containers and automating that has been such a wonderful thing. Awesome. So you did upgrade to test containers. Yeah. So basically, once okay. test containers uh, came out, um, I, uh, I've got a test. Fantastic. That uses that has a couple of repositories and and uses uh, yeah uses test containers. Fantastic! And it just works. All right, let's keep going. So here's the thing where I always default to running that that same upgrade Spring Boot three recipe. Right. That's just my my normal. Uh, it's probably not going to do a whole lot for us here. It'll upgrade some things. It'll upgrade the Maven Palm and the version. It might find some properties. Uh, that need to be upgraded, and it'll probably throw in that glassfish, uh, Jack's B that may or may not be needed. <laughs> but that's kind of where I start, right? Let's let's start. Let's see what what works, what doesn't, and then we'll we'll dig in because there are some other things that we might want to yes. uh, dig into. But so I wonder if will it include the security five six ones? Uh, it'll do some, but no. Okay. Okay. Um, that um, is so there's three buckets of things that are the hardest to upgrade uh, that we run into like at at scale the things that we run into where people get stuck and, and they're like well what do we do uh, the first bucket is the internal libraries and wrappers this is the one that we run into the most often where hey I put a, a wrapper around the spring boot parent palm you know it's my enterprise.org parent palm and everybody must use this and that just Oftentimes it doesn't provide a lot of value, but it does become a big blocker for trying to stay upgraded. Because mm -hmm. it's like tomorrow, Spring Boot 3.2 is gonna come out on Thursday. Or tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow. Spring Boot 3.2. If you've yeah. got a parent palm, you know, in your org, you've mm -hmm. got to then upgrade the parent palm, and then you've got to go and upgrade everybody. Uh. Right? You can't you can't upgrade it. So let's just say uh, it wasn't 3.2, let's say it was a CVE right. you know, that was being fixed, right? Um, your parent palm process becomes the blocker. Yes, thank you for the calendar.spring.io. Uh, the parent palm becomes the, the bottleneck for all those upgrades. And when I talk about how long does it take to go from, hey, it was released to it's in production, mm -hmm. that just adds another block that right. isn't providing a lot of value. Uh, and I understand where it came from and, oh, well, I want you to use these dependencies and you have to use our internal library, but we can handle those in different ways like recipes or you mm -hmm. know, I use these spring shell projects that like, Hey, make sure that you've got our certificate, right. make sure that you've got our, you know, yeah, whatever it is defined. And I make that a, a shell that you can run or a recipe that you can run locally. I also run it in my pipeline, mm -hmm. but not as a parent problem. There's other ways to fix it that are easier to manage and, and less of a, a problem. So mm -hmm. That's the first bucket. The second one is spring security. Right. And what, what happens is people are looking for the one-to-one, -one, uh, mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, this, I'm looking for another web security filter chain property just like this. And there, there's not, it's been simplified. And I don't, I don't know it. I'm not going to know all the answers, but I know that's where there's going to be a lot of problems. Uh, and then the last one is data, hibernate, yep. hibernate upgrades. Those are the three buckets that we run into the most. All of the other buckets that we ran into have been resolved by the the people that are submitting new recipes all the time over to mm -hmm. OpenAI, right? And yeah, they're not problems anymore. Those are the three buckets that are still pretty consistent. Yeah, luckily I'm um, I, I'm expecting the Spring Data since I'm actually using Spring Data JDBC because I'm a I'm a big fan of 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 uh, aggregates and uh, Spring Data JDBC was designed ex specifically for the type of applications I do, which is domain driven aggregates. Um, it's I, I don't <clears throat> I don't need dirty checking and, and all that other stuff. Yep. So so uh, it's it's uh, when that came out, I basically switched switched over to it, um, and that's been just great. Carl added the whole like defining bombs uh, to get your dependencies as a and I that's something that I 
totally need to put on my list of you know options. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that <clears throat> reminder. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, bombs are, are something that <clears throat> it's like <clears throat> I know enough Maven to be dangerous, um, but but sort of it's been a while since I've had to to, to work on projects myself in a in a sort of larger environment where a lot of that stuff um uh or some of that stuff like the parent palms you were mentioning mm -hmm. co come into play so yeah uh, so simon asks about about you that's actually um uh i have i've played around with it on and off for many many years um and for some reason in my head that's something that i associate with you <laughs> really yeah <laughs> Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I don't know if you did it on stream or something, but for some reason in my head, I put you in that bucket. See, here's where I'd, I'd love to ask my personal chat GPT. Hey, did I ever yeah, talk about yeah. you? Um, yeah. uh, I did use it for a project in 2016, 2015. Okay. So that that shows you how 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 long it's it's been. Uh, and and I've kept track of it, and I've I've wanted to, to use it here and there. Um, and so uh, one of the nice things about sort of an architecture is with with sort of DVD and aggregates is like each thing can 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 actually you can use polyglot persistence right so I can say hey for this stuff I'm gonna use you know Spring Data JBC and Postgres um, and then for this stuff I'm gonna use uh, Juke and and maybe some other database or maybe also Postgres uh, and so sort of that that freedom to to do that. Um, while I probably wouldn't do that unless I had a really good reason in like a real, you know, uh, corporate uh, project, it's, you know, the advantage of these these projects is I can do whatever the heck I want. Yeah. Um, to add on to that thread, that idea of I can have different persistent tiers. Uh, we mentioned Spring Modula. This idea, right. in what's in my head and what I'm doing is I'm taking some of these microservice patterns where I had, you know, gateways and securities and user service and product service uh, as a microservice architecture. And I'm trying to pull that back. One yep. of the <clears throat> kind of uh, rules, practices is when you have a microservice, it has its own data store. You don't right. have the, the multiple services reliant on the same schema because it's right. hard to update. Like, how do you do that? Right. So in my experimenting i'm trying to do this like hey i've got the user service is going to live in postgres and the mm -hmm. product service is going to live in mysql and the, right. uh, every other service is going to live in redis and like right. put those together but yeah. it's still being deployed as one application right. Right. and having all those different persistence tiers yeah. uh what's the uh i don't remember what it's called like the the guy the better mousetrap and he has like and it hits this and then it does the thing yeah like, what are those things called? Uh, Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg. machine. Yep. 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 Uh, I, in this Spring Modula project, I'm, I'm developing like a Rube Goldberg. <laughs> uh, everything gets persisted to eight different things all through events. Uh, so yeah, it's, some, it's I sometimes think it is it is, it is, it is uh, Frankenstein's monster because it's a whole bunch of different parts that's one big walking unit that it's functional, but it doesn't look pretty. Yeah. Um, but actually, that might be fine. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing is I. Uh, 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 you probably don't. Is, is I'm a, I'm I'm pretty big on on moduliths over microservices, just because I've seen so much pain and suffering that teams are are, are dealing with because they have too many microservices and and a, and a lack of understanding of what what the whole purpose is and and um, and if you create your application in a modular way, then yes, you can have this information, this service and all its data is, is you know, it doesn't have to be in separate, separate deployable units. Um, and that makes refactoring, which of course I'm a big fan of, you can yeah. see it on my hat, um, it makes it so much easier. <clears throat> and when I was working at Google and early in, earlier in this century, um, Google has a mono repo. And so it made things so much easier uh, and now they had tools and built up, but I think that that uh, there's there's lots of lots of advantages to that. But yeah, you don't have to have one. You know, it's like oh, I, you know, 
we only can use this database and, and this database and and we want to you know and one of the things that actually we're talking about in our book club uh greg young has a, no relation has uh of, of cqrs fame has a talk that we were looking at from 2014 about polyglot persistence like look if you need a graph database use a graph database don't try to put that in 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 sql because in a relational table based thing because it doesn't fit yeah um we've all made that mistake we've all done yeah. really nasty things that we're not proud of because all we had access to was oracle or or, <clears throat> or that's all we knew and we didn't we didn't you know you know back in the in, in the late 90s early 2000s like yeah well, all we had was oracle there, yeah. there were no other databases. There was no such thing as a graph data, or at least not, you know, there were object databases. Those were yeah. big and we saw how well those turned out. Um, uh, but yeah, now we have a plethora of, of databases and and not that you want to use them just because, oh, we've never used this one, let's go use it. Right. But now you have, you can say, is this something that is appropriate for a relational schema or is this something that that maybe requires a, a different different kind of thing? And you can use those from one, deployable artifact and, and it's great yeah I... oh echo strike sorry just, just want to call yeah. out echo strike resubscribed on 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 twitch thank you so much echo strike nice awesome. to see you here yeah uh yeah this is great i i like to um just reevaluate my assumptions i think that's a practice that everybody needs to do like hey yeah. now that you know, I used to, I used to say that like, like every year, like have a, have a party. Um, I talk about like the maturity dashboard. Mm -hmm. like if you took all your projects and you said, Hey, are you on the latest version of spring boot? Uh, does it have our test passing? Does it, you know, it's got coverage. Uh, does it have pipelines? Is it being deployed to uh, railway instead of uh, Heroku? Like, have we done right. all these things right. that we call mature And every right. year, you know, my, my approach used to be every year you upgrade that maturity model. Like, yep. Yeah. Now those other things, those are given. Now this is the new A, right? Right. right that we're <clears throat> shooting for. But now that Java is coming out every six months, yeah, and Spring Boot's coming out every six. My new mindset is every six months, right? Reevaluate your yeah. portfolio, yeah, and reassess what what what's good. Yeah. Because maybe and one and one of the things I like is, um, and this comes from my extreme programming background, is is um, if it's painful, do it more often because it turns out that then it becomes easier. And so if you're trying to upgrade from eight to 21, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But if you were upgrading along the way, yes, the eight to nine transition was really painful and difficult. But once you got past that, once you got to, to 11, um, then going to, 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 to you know, take the interim ones, 12, 13, yeah. 14, 15, 16, 17. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm look, there's some stuff in 22 that I'm, that I'm looking forward to. Uh, Which 21 is, is middle age. 21's been out for over two months. 21's, 21's 22 old is right around the corner. You can get the advanced ones on, on 22 and, and yeah. start trying it out. And, but that's things like, and you know, with tools like this open rewrite, you can, uh, and there's another one called uh, error prone that does some, some similar kind of stuff. Um, and uh, the, if you do it more often, and just, you know, it's like, oh, it's really hard. It takes us so long to deploy. Well, like then deploy more often uh and it, it takes us too long to do this and and so um i think that's the hardest thing the hardest shift uh is is to get there uh, but once you're you're on that faster faster release frequency and faster deployment and a lot of it of course if you've got good tests and fast tests then it makes a whole all the rest of it the rest of it much easier you say if it's painful do it more often the way i say it in my house is uh do the hard things until they're easy yeah so yeah. very similar. I like that. Yeah. And, and, and sort of part of the more often is breaking things down into smaller steps. And this is for me, a, a fundamental mindset of, of things like test driven development is break it down into the smallest pieces because small steps are easier than large steps, but breaking it down to small steps is hard. So it's easier once you figured out what those steps are, but it's often can be very difficult to figure out what is the next smallest step to, to do. Yeah. And that's a skill that yeah. you have to practice too. Yeah. And, and it's totally a learnable skill. And um, whether you do TDD or not, breaking stuff down into small little tiny steps of behavior modification 
uh, are are a great are a great way to go. Whether you do test first or test later. Fantastic. Yeah, sometimes uh, complaining doesn't doesn't always work. Um, that's a that's a separate skill. That's that's actually really hard. Is is how do you influence your your business folks to say, look, we need to spend some a little bit more time, not take three weeks off and and do nothing but refactoring, but hey, how about we spend ten percent of our time, twenty percent of our time doing these refactorings and adding tests and upgrading these things that that business you can get your stuff sooner um and i think that's uh <clears throat> that's a, a struggle yeah and that's a it's a culture signal like yeah there are definitely yeah. orgs mercedes put out their open source i don't know if they call it a manifesto but it's their their policy on open source and how they're giving all of their software engineers time to contribute and learn mm -hmm. open source technologies. Like that's a part of their policy. I, I read it, I was impressed by it. And you know, if your company's, if a company has something like that, like that's definitely like a magnet that's gonna pull yeah. me in a little bit closer yeah. uh, as a developer. So yeah, but navigating the, the company stuff, that's something I'm still working on. All right, so let's run it. <clears throat> let's run it. And let's see see what happens. <clears throat> this alias Maven to dot Maven W you should probably write an alias for that. Um, so I I make an alias that's I call it Spring Cubed. That's mm -hmm. the upgrade it to run that recipe, upgrade it to Spring Boot three, uh, and it does it looks for the dot MVNW. Um, but I believe that there is also a recipe that'll upgrade your Maven wrappers version. Oh, I should probably do that too. Yeah. Cause this one's probably a little, a little older. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 there's so many things I could, I could improve at the command line, yep. but I, I find myself, um, just not at the command line as much as I used to. I, I find myself, uh, uh, just doing so much in, in IntelliJ, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, 25 years ago it was Emacs was where I lived and 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 these days it's IntelliJ ideas yep. where I live and and I do almost everything from within it. So it's really interesting. I use um dir and <coughs> D-I-R-E-N-V. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that? Uh, I use that a lot. Uh, the one thing that we've been talking about lately is to keep your secrets. Mm -hmm. Keep them in yes. a, a key store or someplace yep. else so you don't have yep. any secrets yep. on your on your local. So then when I go into the ensemble directory, uh, before I pull up uh, IntelliJ and or idea dot, uh, I'm in that directory, and my Durham sets up my uh, in my environment. So I can set up things like, hey, here's my my credentials, here's my my key as an environment variable. And then what I do is or what the other things I could do is I could have these, these plugins ran, I could run mm -hmm. these recipes, like before you start IntelliJ, like you go into this directory immediately right. as right. part of Durand, like run these scripts and have it upgrade the things. So that's just something that makes yeah, it. Yeah, I, st I store all my my keys in the in the uh, in my local machines config directory, so it's not uh, so it's basically a Spring Boot config, but it's you know basically in yeah. tilde slash config, yeah. and that way it never gets accidentally pushed in and it never shows up anywhere. Um, but I saw your stream on, on that. It's like, oh, I should, I should try that out. Cause yeah. that actually, uh, might, might make it easier, especially as I move across, move across machines. Yeah. And on, on streams, it's nice. Uh, yeah. my, my worry of credentials getting put in yes. so for a long time, I was in that mode of, I just didn't want to have credentials on my computer and, yeah. you know, as you're traveling more and all that kind of stuff and yes. especially more yeah. that you stream. Yeah, so exactly. Now I'm, updating all of those .envrc files and they can those can even be committed so right right josh and i are sharing the same .envrc right. file yeah we've if you're on a team game. absolutely yeah. yeah we yeah. both have our own secret bucket right but his access he's accessing his keys i'm accessing mine and we have the same outcomes yeah. so that makes it real nice so, so it looks like on. thank you guys so much for sure we've got a build failure. All right, let's see. What uh, it says could not parse as Java illegal arg exception. So Come it is saying web security. Web All security right. config. Okay. Huh. Uh, well, we, we knew we were going to get into some to some some security security stuff. So let's see. Uh, that's a Java let's template. Let's see what's parser. going on. Oh wait, it didn't do anything else. It just stopped. 
it just completely stopped. So it was, uh, this recipe produced an error. Please report to the recipe author. Wait a cool. Minute. Wait a minute. This is, um, this is unexpected. This is not a normal behavior. Yeah, this is definitely not. Uh... Oh, and that's another turn the mic volume up. I will do that. Uh, normally, I just got to talk into the mic. It's a little, <laughs> I try to keep it not on camera. I just got to talk into the mic. Uh, so, yeah. This is um, interesting because what I expect, I expect it to be able to get through everything. So we ran our tests before and tests all passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the app, I mean, the application is clearly working because it's yeah. deployed in production. Uh, so I wonder what it got hung up on. Let's see. So what, does it even tell us what line? Could not parse as Java. Hmm. Yeah, I mean this. This, I mean, as you know, security configurations go. This is not terribly yeah. complex. Um, but I do do some unique things. So uh, basically, I have um, an access to the night handler. Um, I have a, a user authorities mapper because I map, uh, I do some mapping of, of basically you log into Ensemble using GitHub. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. use, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to write authentication and there's no need for it. People actually have to access who are part of the group have to have access to GitHub anyway. Uh, so using GitHub uh, OAuth kills a, multiple birds with, with a single stone. Um, uh, so yeah, it's not, not terribly. Like that's it actually fits on the screen um yeah so so, so first thing is like we want to make sure we capture this note um second thing is is i want to just try re rerunning it um that's yeah just try rerunning it because i have had where the recipe didn't download everything it needed to download and rerun worked um Robotech, thanks for being here. And Icon, thanks for <laughs> hanging out with us. Uh, my marathon went great. I survived. I'm I'm recovered now, uh, so now I'm ready to look for the for the next one. And uh, yeah, it is the day before Thanksgiving. I'm excited. Yeah. So so Echo Strike, this this API has has changed. Uh, the security stuff has changed. Although it is, they still tend to be this fluent chain API, which um, that's why I have the formatter on and off because otherwise IntelliJ will try to reformat it for my nicely laid out things. So I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it's, it's terrible. Uh, it, it can get, um, it can get a bit, a bit overwhelming, but I think, I think it's okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I should use a different metaphor than, than killing birds with stones. <laughs> Yeah, so so tip for those of you who who do this kind of thing and you don't want your formatters to automatically reformat, uh, IntelliJ will respect these tags. So when you when you you know I'll often hit hit the shortcut key to just reformat code uh, almost without thinking. Uh, in fact, I have it done upon commit, and so it'll 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 uh, ignore this this segment of code so so that it won't try and. Push stuff said, together. That should be pushed together. I think I saw you do this. You have like a post commit tag or a commit well. So IntelliJ. So again, I do all my stuff in IntelliJ. So yeah. IntelliJ has a bunch of things where you can say uh, optimize imports. Uh, here I don't have reformat code on on here, mm -hmm. um, but you can do a whole bunch of things. Check your to dos. So I'll often uh, when I'm working with with others, I'll actually reformat code, uh, sometimes rearrange code, and then check to dos. Like we have a, a rule where. Um, you cannot push. Um, uh, so sometimes we have a pre-commit check. Sometimes we just have a, a uh, we'll do it here. Um, like no to do's allowed. Like they should be temporary and they should never, never enter uh, the, the mainstream. But in this case I have, because IntelliJ is great at formatting code, um, I'll have it just reformat things. 
Yeah. So same, same problem. Okay. Well, that's, uh, so, that's interesting and unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that's too bad. So let's go up to the log and let's see which recipes it was trying to run. And it, so it, it doesn't it, say. So we didn't it even It says get, running recipes. So we didn't even get there. And then it said, I mean, it's running. It, it, uh, so it looks like. Error yeah, it doesn't tell us. So it's using the visitor pattern. And it's going in and it says, hey, I was visiting this and I couldn't parse it. That's I couldn't so parse weird. it as Java. So we can, we can. Yeah, this is new. Um, Carl says, which. So Carl says, which version of JDK am I running on? Uh, we know it sh should 21. be on 21. And yeah, 101. Uh, maybe you should try Java 17. Could try 17. I mean, doesn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, but let's keep track of this. I want to just write down this error. Could not parse as Java. I mean, this is web security config. Just take some notes. I, I do. I want to open up issues, uh, and if we can create a, if we can reproduce it, we might as well. Yeah, I forget what what version is is the project in. Yeah, the project's in seventeen. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's it. Do experiment, and and since this one didn't work, uh, well, we can take time and I can show you another tool that I share with folks, and see how that works. One thing we could also try is running a, a smaller recipe. Yeah, because this recipe is a, a recipe of recipes. Exactly, and yep. so we could we could just run run some others and just see see what's going on there. And by the way, hi Lexlers. I don't know if I said said hi when oh, you said Lexlers. good morning. So. Welcome. I think we've said hello to everybody. Tooks, hello. Yes. Uh, so, so Simon mentions um, uh, Laurent uh stuff about security. I have his. I have his. I actually have all the editions of his book, and and I need to go through them because there's some stuff that I have in my project where it uh, is yes. kludgy. All right. So. That is interesting. Thanks to, to Carl's recommendation of trying uh, 17. That's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, is this repo public? Yes, it is. Okay. It is public. Public and open source. Fantastic. So, All right. So, yeah. So it made a whole bunch of changes. All right. Um, um, so now, now the fun part. Yeah, we can go. Uh, let's let's run the tests. I will be amazed if there are, if there are no errors. Yes, so the MVC matchers. So this is the security, uh, the whole security configuration that that changed. Mm -hmm. um, where instead of using the the old web security config that extended something and override. Now you basically just have uh, uh, security filter chain, filter chain. Um, so it can't, what methods are on here? Uh, yeah, so. So this is unsurprising, folks. I. Yeah. If, if nobody else, I expected the, the security stuff to, to, to not transition. Um, it clearly changed it, but not enough. Right. So let's take a look at, so now what I do is I say, let's go to our uh, release notes. I look at the Spring Boot migration guide, uh, kind of as a, hey, where to start? Spring Boot. 
migration guide. There's a Spring Boot 3 migration guide. And there's a Spring security section right there. Yep. Migration guide, preparing for six, update password. Uh, I'm going to look for uh, matchers. Do we change anything? Yeah, matchers? so I would expect the matchers. I uh, wonder if it's a, if it's the migration to 5.8 that we need, yeah. So... Yeah, I think I saw request matchers. Yeah. Uh, so Simon mentions, yeah. Request matcher instead of MVP yeah, because I think they they they, because I know the the old in the olden days it was ant matcher, um, yep. and then uh, MVC matcher reduced some some issues with some potential problem security issues. Uh, but I'm losing the, not seeing the specific guide for that. So let's see. Use here we go. I'll put the link. Here. So for directions on how to upgrade, visit the Getting Spring Security section. Uh, I think you are on. I just put the link. Uh, I'll grab that. It has the ant matcher to request matcher. And MVC matcher to request matcher. So it looks like it's a straight change. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Use this as advertised. Uh, Use the new screen. request matchers. Uh, so we're going from Oh, it looks like a one-to-one -one change. So that's interesting. Like why the change. looks like so? Yeah. So that seems like um, I'll use my multi carrot. That seems like open rewrite uh, recipe. Yeah. Could have done that. Yeah. Especially since it's a one to one, not like yeah. parameters changed order or, or meaning change or something like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, but it was, for it MVC sounds like you're taking notes on that. I so, uh, you'll, for MVC you'll... matcher and for ant matcher. And for ant matcher. I was yeah. with somebody yesterday where they were doing the upgrade and their ant matchers uh, changed. Uh, ah, can't access test rule. Uh, oh, was that a J unit? That wasn't a J unit four test, was it? Um, wait, I'm confused. What? Where is it at? Postgres test. Hold on, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a rebuild. Okay, I'm suspicious of that. So it's saying. Uh, so let's look at our test container dependency. Which version are we on? Uh, you know, another oh, good thing yeah. Is, another yeah. Good thing is let's take uh, uh, the one we got from Carl, the Maven dependency updates. Yeah, but actually, now that you mentioned the um, test containers. Uh, so let me see. So what did it, what did it do so far? So it upgraded to three three one five. Okay, mm -hmm. and containers. Oh, no, here, look here. You got a you got a new it's... exclude. Also, did you see that? Right there, we have. Uh, That's yeah. probably not needed anymore. Uh, you probably not. This uh, exclude genet genet. Yeah, so this was done because I uh, uh, I 
do this at some point because test containers will pull in both JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it still does that. Um, but yeah, we're definitely on an old old test container version. Okay. So let's up the exclusions. Go to test containers dependency. Uh, um, um, yeah, do this. Do the do the Maven uh, versions display dependency updates that we got. Yeah, and let's see what else we got. Like, well, I could have run it with the dash NTP, okay. but that's fine. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah. I would just start with the test container one, the bottom two. Well, I know test containers itself is. Oh, it's one nineteen three. Okay, yep. I was confused by the by the JUnit. So one nineteen three, literally just came out. This is so cool, like that. So again, you know, like these these little takeaways uh, as we're doing this, um, just that alone, the the display dependency updates. That's something that, you know, I I'm not a big fan of like reports per se. Mm -hmm. Like just like, hey, you got something wrong. I'm more a fan of like, I found something wrong. I know how to fix it. Right, right. Yeah, I'm sure because um, I run uh, depend. I, I let Dependabot uh, access my GitHub repos, and, mm -hmm. and it's been complaining for a long time about about various things. And um, yeah, yeah. Let's see if that fixed it. Uh, so let's do a rebuild. Yeah, that's the. I'm I'm perplexed by the error because it's it it said something, and IntelliJ didn't see it, and so mm -hmm. it was a little odd. So, is your IntelliJ using Java seventeen? But it compiled, so that must have been it. Um, it must have been the the. My guess is is probably because the exclusion that you noticed probably caused some some problem and confusion. Um, so I'm glad I don't have to exclude anymore. Uh, and we think we don't need we this. We think we don't need that. But we so can run a test. Okay. Let's run our tests. I'm just amazed well, I'm amazed. The two tests that are passing. I'm amazed that <laughs> all the tests pass, I got to say. Now, one thing is, is that I don't have tests. Um, because it's it's a, a, a something I need to research more, I, and, and this is where I need to, to go and, and reference um, uh, the, the the Spring security stuff is is testing s code that is uh, that has Spring security is been the bane of my existence, mm -hmm. and I basically um, just disabled all those tests because. So give me the example, like hey, so. I Right. Um, yeah. So I've got uh, application. Let's see, that would have been in. Um, Carl saying you cannot exclude JUnit G in from test containers because internally they use something of JUnit 4. Yeah, I was able to exclude the engine because clearly that worked before. Mm -hmm. um, but they must have changed something since 1.18. Uh, and or some interaction with with Spring Boot, who okay. knows? Um, I may have to go look at that again because one okay. of the things is when you're writing a test, um, IntelliJ will, will, if it sees JUnit four somewhere on on your class path, it's going to uh, suggest that as as something to use. Um, so let's see, member endpoint tests. Uh, yeah. So basically, I'm trying to to test stuff through through the the endpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, can I can I get the page? And uh, I've just gone through all sorts of stuff using with mock user, yep. and because I have this custom um, authorities mapper in in the mix. Uh, I, I could just I, I I could just never get it to work, and I'll, I'll have mm -hmm. to revisit it because I I uh, especially now that my security is updated, maybe there's there's some some, yeah. some newer stuff that 
or at least that when I ask questions, they won't be annoyed. It's like, it's like, oh, that's old stuff. We don't think about that anymore, you know, because and yeah. not annoyed, but in the sense of um, I'm asking them something bad, but it's a lot easier to answer questions from their side yeah. on newer stuff than on, than on stuff that's two years old. So like that, that suite of tests that I normally would do is like, hey, I've got um, three roles, uh, you know, whatever user, admin, other, uh, and then I try, I want to test to make sure that they are able to see and not see the things that I would expect. Right. And so I had like a regular test that was just for security that was just, it would stand up and I was using my default was I was doing um, mock MVC test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's how I was doing, I think that's what you're using maybe. Uh, but that's, that's how I was validating. Yeah. Hey, given this role, given this uh, access, set it up this way and go. And then I was doing it with and without a lot. So I had like these different blends of things that I would set up, uh, for that test. But yeah, getting it, once you get it, once you get that pattern in place. Yeah. And this is the other thing with security. Like once you figure out, Hey, this is how we do security and this is kind of where, how we do it. Like there's not. 20 different patterns for how right. you're accessing things right uh typically so yep. once you figure out that pattern then you copy that pattern and you go apply it to the rest of your repositories your other projects yep. yeah Please. yeah and so that's that's i remember and I'm, I'm and this is again it's like i'm sure i have the video of me struggling with this and, and basically <laughs> giving up which video did i struggle yeah. with web security and I, I'm also sure because it was so frustrating and and not fun to watch that I did a lot of the the struggling off offline. Um, and this is where a tool like uh, uh, it's a Mac based tool called Rewind, where it basically monitors and records everything you're doing, um, and then you can search that. So so in the sense that it's a, the same kind of thing, but it's it's monitoring only only what you're doing. So I'm sure that if I had that running, it would I'd be able to find when was it I struggling records. with. Everything you're doing, how? Like the screen? Uh, the screen, uh, web camera, if you let it, um, and and audio. Uh, and originally it was only for M, uh, M1, M2 processors. Oh. They now either have made available or are making available uh, an, an Intel version. So I haven't been able to use it much because my the machine we're on now, my iMac, is, is, an, is an Intel-based machine. Um, so I couldn't, couldn't use it on that. Uh, but it's really nice. It's like, hey, when was I browsing for for so and so? Um, and so it's really, really handy. So I, on my on my laptop, which is an M M2 Max, yeah, uh, it can it, it totally does that. Carl put up the uh, test containers issue. Ah, yes. So let me take a look at that. It shouldn't require you to for library on runtime class path. Oh, this has been open for a long time. Let's see. I expect test containers doesn't require G unit four. As you can see, the legacy dependency has been excluded. In my case, I created. Oh yeah, so I think this was the. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, now. Um, are you using generic container? I don't know. Uh, let's go to your your test container. Uh, where you're using your test containers and your tests. Uh, I just want to see how it's set up. So this is probably the old style. Because because yeah. I've got the the dynamic property source. Yeah, so we can um, we so can we can do update some other that upgrades. Yeah, uh, where we're using um, I forget what it's called. The so what is it the the, the service con service connector connector right. yeah service connector. Uh, so how many it makes it so we don't need all of those uh, properties? We don't have to redefine all those properties. Yep. We just get them. So let's uh, so let's run these tests. Well, right, but like right now, let's right, do let's do a commit. Right now, we're good. We we have upgraded. We're on three point one point five. We're using Java seventeen, and we are thumbs up. So fairly painless. We did have to roll back to Java seventeen in order to run the recipe. Yes. Yeah, so that was good. That was a good call. Yep. Thank you, uh, Carl. To, to try that. Thank you, Carl. And, how how great is it that we have a, a team helping us yeah. do this? And uh, okay, so committed that. Um, let's uh, can I run this locally? So 
Yeah. Here's right another there. feature, right? Um, one of the other capabilities that you get with Spring Boot 3, I think it came out in 3.1.2, was that um, that test class. So when I was, you know, yeah, out in the world doing my stuff, uh, I I didn't really enjoy the Docker Compose, but although Docker Compose is nice, it was like, hey, mm -hmm. here's a Docker Compose, you can run it locally. I like, do that git clone run, like mm -hmm. with Docker Compose. Uh, so with Spring Boot, I think, the Docker Compose support came out with Spring Boot 3, where if there's right. a Docker Compose, right. it'll start it up for you right. and make everything available. So you can at least right. have a working local right. version. Right. But then later, they added this service connector and they added this new pattern with your test class. You could have a test application class that runs your main, your Spring Boot application class. Right. Uh, but it also passes in this test container context that has your defined test containers running. Right. So instead of running your main class, you run this test class and you get all your test containers and then you don't need your Docker Compose. Right. So yes, and I was just reading about that where um, it feels like, still seems like a slightly in flux, um, but basically uh, um, if you want to run your, your application locally, yeah. but you want to use test containers, what exactly what you're describing. And it's like, you just do, do this. And I'm like, yeah, because right now what I have to do, I mean, it's, it's not a, it's not a huge burden. I don't have a Docker compose, but um, IntelliJ does have uh, a way to run Yep. as a run configuration. I can just run Postgres. Yep. And, and uh, so when you do that, does it run it as a Docker container? Yes. Awesome. And so what you can do is um, it will, like again, it's like I never have to leave IntelliJ, which is that's kind of the goal. which is my my dream, right? You know, yeah. It, I, it, once once it pulls an email, then I'll, <laughs> which is always the joke, right? It's like you know, uh, all all development environments expand until they they can handle email. That was yep. the joke on Emacs, and so please, uh, JetBrains, do not add email to IntelliJ. Okay. Um, but you can see all the containers and images and, and things like that, and and look at the process from from within uh, IntelliJ. That's amazing. Um, yeah, we talk about this. Git clone run is the lifestyle that we want to be in, right? So you can just check it out yeah. and boom. Uh, then, yeah, not even depending on your IDE, just be able right. to, yeah, go and run yeah. it. So it is getting better. I love that you brought up, like, I don't want to leave my IDE either. Like, uh, one of the things that I, I used from you in the past was you used to have the little uh, IntelliJ plugin that had the chat. Mm -hmm. So I could just be looking at my IDE right. and I had my right. little chat. And now that I'm, I'm streaming again today, uh, kick, uh, I have to stream over RTMP, mm -hmm. I think it's the protocol. Yeah, uh, so I don't get the chat integrated with StreamYard, mm -hmm. but I could, if I go back to using your plugin, I could right. do it there. So I could still yeah. see and share all the stuff. Yeah. So yeah. The advantage of the new 3.1 setup is that it auto starts, stops the containers if not explicitly configured otherwise. With that setup, you still needed to define it as a pre-action, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is this is sort of the you know the stuff I'm I'm gonna have to spend a little time on. It's like, what are all the goodies that I get since since 2.7? So many goodies. And you know uh, who's got a great, you know, short story for you to go watch? Dan gee, who Vega. would that be? Dan Vega's got one. <laughs> he, he's got all the new features in Spring Boot. I am, I am oh, surprised. 3.1, 3.2, yep. and they're easy to consume. Yeah. Uh, I, I would start there with yeah, Dan's definitely videos. Definitely, I'll do that. And then, yeah, and then as you go, like, uh, I have another question for you, though, that you don't like to leave your IDE. Do you use DevTools? Yes. Locally? Okay. Yeah, Remember. yeah. Um, although I have, uh, I have... So there's some interesting stuff that happens when you when you have dev tools. I think I actually pulled it out of Ensembler because it was causing some weird. Um, I don't remember the specific issues, uh, but it was just like it wasn't providing value anymore, um, mm -hmm. and so it, and it was interfering. I forget what it was interfering with. It might have been I'm curious. live reload wasn't working properly. I forget what it was, um, yeah. but I. I was like during one of your ensemble videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to find out. Right. Uh, this is something that I wasn't using. I was comfortable. I, I would always have my terminal open and I was just doing 
you know, the Maven start run or Maven clean test in my terminal. Uh, and now I find myself shifting to using more of the IDE. I'll tell you a secret. Um, I have been trying to like, you know, limit how much time I spend on it. I could be down here for 24 hours, yeah. but now I've got this iPad pro over here. And like when I don't want to get like all the way into the code, Mm -hmm. I run this iPad Pro and I do a remote and I use the code tunnel, VS Code's tunnel. Mm -hmm. So just like for little things, especially when I'm doing right. Python, like I don't want to mess right. up my, my ID with Python plugins. Right, right, so, right. Uh, VS Code, yeah, install all the plugins because I don't use it that often, but it's been a nice like hours of battery. Uh, it's enough mm -hmm. to like open up all my stuff. I can have all my projects open. I can go in and look, but it's just my iPad. And it's yeah. been it's been really nice and i've been spending yeah. a lot more time on that lately yeah i just i just live in intellij and so using anything else is is uh, is yeah. my, my yeah. fingers don't like it because yeah. they know all the all the magic shortcuts do you do the emacs bindings then no 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 i i i haven't been an emacs user yeah. for real in in quite some time i use and since i do a lot of training and 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 uh, education. I I try not to stray too much from sort of the out of the box experience. Um, Wonderful. So I, I you know I'll add on a few shortcuts for things uh, that that don't come out of the box. But pretty much I'm I'm pretty much out of, out of the box kind of kind of set up. I want to ask yeah. more about your training. Sorry if that's off topic, but like the as you're training, so you're also kind of recommending like, hey, we're going to use IntelliJ, and your people are getting trained on until it here's the yes. shortcut here's how we do yes. this and the the carrot select and all that kind of stuff that's cool yeah yeah and that's that's something that that um so the way the way we do the the ensemble the mob programming and there are different ways people do it sometimes people have hey everybody uh connect to this vm that's running on some cloud machine mm -hmm. um or everybody connect to my machine uh that has its benefits like that means nobody else has to set up anything mm -hmm. the downside is is you're it's sort of like you're doing this in in somebody else's room in somebody else's uh, uh house and it's like but then when you go back home and you try to do it it's like oh everything's different and so what's nice and, and Lexler's uh is is actually part of this group and um what's nice is you're using your own machine because we use zoom and basically we swap screen sharing uh and uh, so that way, when you learn stuff, and for me as the facilitator, it's like, wait, are you on Windows or Mac? Because I have to give you different shortcuts. Uh -huh. um, but but uh, uh, other people help out, and so we're not just you know. So so what we're really learning is is not just like how do we implement this and and architect this and design this and 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 encode this and write tests for this, but it's also um, how to how to use IntelliJ in ways that a lot of people don't know. Like I've I've been using IntelliJ for for twenty plus years, as long as it is, it's existed. And there's stuff in there that um, one of the presentations I did at KCDC was here is an hour of me refactoring this code using stuff you probably have never tried or seen, um, and and it's just fun. Like there's there's nothing like being able to you know do a few automated refactorings and significantly change your design and yeah. knowing that that for the most part it's going to work that's awesome yeah oh thanks cool. lexlers yeah. yeah and because you're you're you you know you're doing it using real code and getting feedback in the moment right to me that's the ideal learning environment so when you change drivers you're changing screens yep uh there's a commit and then we're just grabbing yes. the updates and doing that. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. So there's a tool called Mob SH, um, Mob. which is a wonderful tool. SH. Uh, it basically does all the hard work of creating a brand specifically for the work in progress that you're doing as as a mob. Um, and you just say Mob start, pull, it gets all the latest stuff on your machine, and then Mob next pushes it up for the next person, and we can <laughs> we can rotate in twenty seconds. Wow. Yeah. So everybody has that installed. Everybody has that installed. Yeah. So there. So yes. you know, to, to get into to my ensemble. And by the way, you are are totally welcome to to join. Uh, you can start out just as a spectator. 
um, you're totally welcome to join. Like Let me know. Sure. And um, we have a timer that, that's set up. And I, in fact, I, I, part of Ensembler, the next feature I'm going to write is a timer to build into to Ensembler uh, because we use another tool called Mob Time. But, um, but it means I have to do something manually, right? I have to yeah. take the people who are in the course in my Ensembler. I mean, I have to copy and paste them, but I copy and paste them into a randomizer first to randomize yeah. the order. And then I copy and paste that into the uh, mob timer. And it's like, why am I doing that? Um, and so uh, we set time for you know three to five minutes per per, per, per person. And then, then we rotate and the screen share, it's like, it's just really smooth, works, works really well. Um, I'm gonna give you another tidbit on, with StreamYard, you can do the, Thing. So I don't know if you're paying for Zoom. Uh, I'm paying for, for Zoom anyway because I do all my, my training through Zoom. So okay. it's not yeah. an additional yeah. additional thing. Yeah. Like my I normally do one on one Zoom. Uh, so I'm not paying for that. Yeah. Uh, but I do just I use StreamYard. I send a link. I create a, a recording studio. Right. I send a link to that recording studio and I can bring in my people there. Yeah. Yeah. What my my dream is to be able to have a tool where I, as the facilitator, can see everybody's screen at the same time. And I know there's some tools that kind of do that because as a trainer, what I want to do is I want to do code along with me. Yep. So I demonstrate something and then I'm able to look at, is everybody doing it? Yeah. Um, if anybody knows of a tool that does that really well, please let me know because or that that's my dream. And it's totally possible. And I'm sure I yeah. could write it using pull it together with open source web RTC stuff. Um, yeah. But I've got uh, enough side projects. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. All, all fun stuff. But uh, that one, that's one, right? For for your core of what you're doing, that makes a lot of sense. There's probably yeah. a lot of value there. And yeah, so, so Simon mentioned uh, a, a, yeah. a value add, like why choose me over the others, right? Yeah, because because um, I've got you know one course that, that I'm way behind on finishing. My apologies to those folks who are who are there, um, but of course we're getting hopefully getting a lot of value out of the, the ensembles. But a, a refactoring with IntelliJ course, and there's um, Heinz Kabitz does does an IntelliJ wizardry course, and he's so I've learned a lot of stuff from him. But really, you know, getting out there that there's just so much more power to this tool. Um, I mean, that's one of the things I, I, I why I do a lot of streaming is I want to show like this is you know this is why I'm sticking with Java is because all these tools yeah. are so so powerful and it keeps on right. Java keeps on getting better. Right. So we're, yes. you know, we, all we did was upgrade today. But right now we have another opportunity to go in and make it even better, make it even easier, yeah. improve, right? Delete code, right? No bugs, delete it. Right? We can make it better. Uh, how far does IntelliJ code with me get you? Or technically speaking? Ah, uh, yes. So, it? yeah. So, so Simon asks about code with me. Um, I tried out code with me a bunch of times and the, I, I was really disappointed because I figured, oh, like I've been using tools. In fact, some of the early videos, you can see me using a tool called Flubits. Um, there's another one called Code Together. A bunch of these tools that try to, you're editing on your IDE, but it's synchronizing with another. VS Code has live code built in, so it works better. Um, uh, and so I tried uh, Code With Me, and I figured, all right, it's coming from JetBrains themselves. But the problem is, is the way they, the, the, the architecture that they use is this sort of client server model, which means you have you don't have all the power of the refactorings as the client that you do as as the host. And for me, that's just that's a no, deal killer. Thing. Right. Okay. That's a deal killer. Um, if you're doing something where you're pairing and you want to pair on one screen, so you don't want to swap back and forth, which for pairing I think is actually nicer, is Tuple. Tuple is awesome. I've used we used uh, James Shore and I when that's we were streaming. Tuple is just in, like it's a it's it's an amazing piece of technology and it and a really uh, it just works so well. What's the URL for that? Tuple.app. Yep. Uh, and yes, so um, I saw you using that. I believe yeah, so you can see down here that's that's what I'm using the presentation assist, assistant. 
and so it shows. What's nice about the presentation assistant is wait, where uh, is what are we seeing? So if you if you watch down here, oh wait, at the bottom you'll see a little remove the comment. Uh, take Carl's comment off the screen. I can't see it. Oh, sorry. I realized that it's hiding the important stuff. There we go. Right. You can see as I expand selection, it does it. Shrink selection. Oh, nice. And that's Files. Like a presentation assistant. Yeah. So I I have um, on my site um, all your plugins. I gotta find it. Your bill of material. Uh, all the plugins. Where's I my TeleJ? in a long time. It looks good. There it is. So, AppShifter is my number one one recent over the past year favorite. Um, if you ever do split screen development, which if you watch my stream, I'm almost always doing split screen tests on the left, code on the right. Uh, it makes switching back and forth and moving things just so easy, so easy. IntelliJ can do it, but then there are no real shortcuts for a lot of the things. Mm -hmm. So it basically adds a bunch of shortcuts and presentation assistant, um, custom post fix, post fixes underused. Go ahead and check that out. Um, Plant UML, of course, and and a few others. So, uh, right on. yeah, I'm learning so much today. Love that stuff. Um, and where is it? Uh, I don't think it's so. If you're really into testing, Infinite Test will basically run all your tests every time code changes. That may or may not work well for you. But you use uh, it. It's, uh, it it's it's when I'm in a certain mode, then then it works. It works really well. <laughs> no Nyan Cat progress bar. <laughs> You know, I used to have that installed, but but um, it it got a little annoying. But uh, if you have not installed the the, the Nyan Cat progress bar plugin, install it for a little bit. Have a little fun. At least once. You only live once. This is great. Yeah, I've seen other people do the like anytime code changes, tests run. Uh, is that something that VS Code has a plugin for too? Maybe I, I think I've seen that pattern with VS Code users more often for some reason. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know about VS yeah. Code. Uh, and I know that, uh, so Carl asked something about um, latest version. I, I'm pretty sure there's, there's some change around that that was introduced recently. Um, it's been one of those things that I feel like I'm a little bit behind. Usually, I'm pretty much at the at the leading edge, but mm -hmm. but uh, there's been so much going on with new versions of versions of Java, and new versions of IntelliJ, and new versions of yeah. Spring, and and other stuff going on that that's like I need to catch up. I need to spend a little time. Like you know, and 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 this is what I always reiterate to people: it's like it looks like I'm really good at this somehow naturally, and it is so not the case. It's like I spent hours where nobody else is watching sometimes yeah. when other people are watching i'm just playing around i'm just experimenting and you know that's how we get to use our tools better right the, again going back to like these tools are supposed to help us and uh, if you don't take the time to learn the shortcuts and experiment and try out the refactorings and and look at like every time in, in you know anything is released anywhere there's a, there's almost always some kind of change log of here's what's new and go through and read that. Like people spend a lot of times, in some cases quite a lot of time, writing those things. And so I think it's 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 great for us to say, what's new? It may not, I may not be something I need. Um, or in six months you may say, was there that new thing? And then you you sort of are at least aware that it that it's there and you can go yeah. go search and find it. Yeah, if we automate all the the boring stuff that we can do yeah. new cool new interesting yeah. stuff. I'm seeing this uh, dependency your sulky ulid. I was like, what? What is that? Yeah. So I just went and grabbed a peek, and I'm like, man, see, I'm just I'm I'm gleaning all of this cool stuff. This is awesome. Love ah, it. so yeah, I keep so on that's what keeping it on learning. What's new? Yeah. Right. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some place where we could go 
and somebody just told us about all the new cool things that were coming out all the time? That'd be great. It's it's there. It's there. You got to read it though. So nobody's going to read it for you. That's the problem. Well, I like to. So like, I, I talked to this, or I think I talked to you about this. This just idea of like, <clears throat> you know, Carl, the, the calendar, calendar aspirin.io. There's always something. And when I look back, there's only two weeks in 2023 where there wasn't something new coming from the spring. Right, day. right. Wouldn't it be nice if there was just like a, and this is my, you know, I think I'll get there eventually, but it's going to take a lot of learning before I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, like, hey, we got a new version of Spring Boot. Like, what are some of the changes? And just a little quick little video that says, hey, here's some of the changes. Oh, we got a new version of Spring Batch. Like, what are the changes? Like, uh, yeah, read me the change logs. Right. Like, right. something right. that you could consume in the background. Yeah. And something that you could find, like, oh, yeah, give me, give me the, the short version. Yeah, this this week's new stuff in Spring. This week's yeah. new stuff in Java. Yeah, yeah. Do it as do it as a podcast. Might as well. Like that. That's that's the goal. I'll get there eventually. Yeah, yeah it's gonna take a, it's gonna take a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of and yeah, because there's a lot of stuff that that's coming out. Um, yeah. uh, and it's yeah. one thing to be be aware of it. It's another to be like, what is this good for? Right. That's the harder part. Like, like, how is this gonna help me? The hard thing for me is like if I go from like 3.1.4 of Spring Boot to 3.1.5, right? Like what what changed? Yeah. Uh, you know, top of my head, I think it's just dependency versions are the only thing that changed. But like, there's no CVEs. Like, hey, I could do that short version. Like, hey, guess what? You could upgrade to this. Like, no stress, no worries. I can go and look at the reason notes. I could do that. But there's a lot of releases. The other, the more difficult thing is, like, what if I'm coming from 2.7? Right. Like, now what's changed? And you'd almost have to, like, review that much yeah. every time. Like, yeah. all right. So if you're coming from 3.1.4, great news, nothing, nothing's right. going on. Here's right. what's been you're, all, you're all good. You're, you're safer than you were. Yeah. You're up if more If you're coming date. from 3.0, like, right. how far do you go back? If you're coming from 3.0, like, hey, here's what's different. If you're coming from 2.7, now... As of tomorrow, I don't have to worry about 2.7. Right. So that's the other nice thing here, right? And this is also when you hear the Spring Team talk about like why they can't support 2.3 any longer. Right. Because that, that's a lot to to keep in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so now it, it, it's three versions, right? That's like, hey, here's the new, the last, and the one before that. So N minus two. That's not right. too much to handle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's just like, what does that format look like? I've, I've noodled over it and I've tried several times mm -hmm. on taking just one and offline and recording. Right. And I'm like, uh, I'm embarrassed a little bit, but then also like some of these projects I've not ever touched. Yeah. Yeah. But if like on November 16th, right, there's multiple projects there. Like if I were mm -hmm. to do that, like that's a fun day of work where I would touch all of those projects. You'd have to have your hello, hello world example. But if it was right. something like real or there was a bug or something like, hey, here's what's been fixed. But just having that hello world example, if I could get to the point where I had a hello world for all 60 of the spring projects, yep. I would be, I would, I'd be loving life. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's, that's awesome. the goal. Maybe we'll see that in 2024, but that's the goal. Yeah. And yeah, this is just, I, I love my job. I love what we're doing. Spring Boot 3.2 comes out tomorrow. Yep. This has been a blast. Ted, I'm glad that we got to, I, I honestly thought we were going to be digging in and running into a lot more problems. Than we yeah, had. I thought so too. I mean, I'll, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to actually run the application well, let's run locally. It. Um, we have time. Let's see I if time. I can, let's see if I, I still can got another it. 30 minutes. I can hang out. Um, let's run. Is Postgres running? I think it was. What's TCR mode? Oh, TCR. So I assume uh, Dudeman is referring to uh, test and, and and commit or revert. And so it's a specific way of doing test-driven development. So the idea is you write the test, it should fail. You write some code, and it should pass. If it doesn't pass, you revert. So instead of trying to, to continue building on the code that hasn't worked yet, it basically sort of forces you to, to take a step back and and, and start over. Um, um, and it's, what was the book? It's... Code complete is that is that where I got that that from? It was code complete. I don't remember who the author. Steve something. 
Uh, code complete is old. Wow. That's yeah, very super old. old. Yeah. Yeah. Where he yeah. said, like, the idea of throwing away code, like being comfortable mm-hmm. throwing away code and starting over. I think that's where I got that concept. Yeah. And it's I still kind of like bleeding. It's in the it. hardest, like, the, the hardest thing to do is you paint yourself in a corner to throw it away and try again. Yeah. It's, it, you know, we as humans have, have this loss aversion. We are, we, time and time again, we're, we're like, we get invested in it and, and staying detached from it and just saying, I don't, you know, so what I recommend to, to folks is, is if you find yourself in a corner, <clears throat> go back to the last work and commit, take a break and come yep. back. And you will, you will be so much better off. And I'd like to follow my advice as well. That would be nice. But if, if you can follow my advice, and then, then then you'll be better off. I all right. Let's run. I like this. That's a that's honestly. I don't know that I've ever. I'm sure I ran across it, but I don't know that I've ever like really thought about it. One of the other things that I, I'm trying to understand it always is like how to get to production faster, how to deliver code faster, better, better code faster, right? So all of these different patterns for how people work, uh, it intrigues me and I like learning and I like practicing. Uh, I was, I was doing XP back in, you know, 99, 2000. Mm-hmm. I've done all different flavors and all the different bells and whistles and everything, but different teams have different needs and different modes that they operate in. Mm. Uh, and, and then a lot of it depends on the, you know, the business culture and the process on how things are, are working. Uh, but you talked about the mob timer and I talked about like the, we did like, it's not mob, but three people in a pod uh, mm-hmm. but we were all working on different parts of the same application and we were just doing it one milestone at a time uh, right. as kind of dependencies. Like, Hey, there's somebody doing the, uh, the UI, somebody doing the API, somebody doing the database and like, all right, now let's tackle this piece. And we had a Pomodoro timer and we would just like heads down, boom. We, and we had each other's computers yes. were open up to each other. So right. 8080 right. on the front end was connected to my 54, 63 or whatever on the back end. And somebody else is kind of like, yeah, managing the API. Yeah, things are working, mm-hmm. running the tests. And even though it sounds awkward for the way that we were delivering things at that time, it was it was exciting and it was yeah. fun. And we yeah. all were contributing at the same time, but right. we were still talking to each other. Like, oh, right. you know what? We went down this path and we changed. And we were able to change quickly. Yes, yes. And, and pivot yep. like as yep. we needed to. Yep. I get goosebumps. Uh, yeah, out being out. able to work that way is, 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 you know, and, and now today as, as ensembles, like I, I would really never want to work any other way. Yeah. I think it's just so, you know, besides being productive and spreading information and, and learning from each other, it's just fun. I mean, we are social beings and yeah. being able to like truly collaborate and, and just have, have fun. Like we get work done, but like it's fun. So to me, it's so much more fun than, than sitting in front of a machine by myself, struggling against something, or even just, you know, getting stuff done. It's just, but then, then doing that in a group um, is so, so much nicer. Uh, and yeah, so. I like the, uh, yeah, the, the mob idea, the mob timer, right? Simon, I'm, I'm looking at you. Like, wouldn't it be fun to just like, hey, let's just build something. Yeah, and do like a, a five minute timer, and just have like you know something like, hey, we're gonna do it, all right, and have it automatically switched. Oh, Simon's going do the mod SH and boop, and now we're here, and now let's just let's go. Like, what's a good way? I like yeah. that. Yeah, fast feedback. Yeah, that's something yeah. that might be fun to do, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so as I, as I suspected all the tests pass, but it looks like we've got a problem. Okay. So, um, so what happens is, 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 uh, it recognized me because I've logged in on this browser using GitHub before. So, so we're basically, running it locally. 
So all running the it locally. Pass, we're trying the new version, right. running locally, and we're running into problems. So it looked up my username, Ted Young, found me, mm -hmm. um, assigned me these roles. So admin is admin and member. Everybody gets a user role, but if you're not a member, you won't see any of the, you won't, it'll be useless to you. Okay. If you're a member, you'll see which ones you can join. If you're an admin, then you can see the admin screen. Um, and so apparently it, uh, it threw an exception somewhere um, and says I'm authenticated, but not authorized. And it seems to have uh, okay. different roles then were they assigned were by the by the authorities mapper. OAuth two user and scope read user. Okay, All right, interesting. So let's go to the GitHub granted authorities mapper uh, where we assign those. Looking up found assigning roles, and the way that we're doing that is. We're putting these roles in that set, map to role set. All right, yeah, so, so the roles that were in the database, mm -hmm. right, are being now just assigned to this right. user. Right, so we return basically a collection of granted authorities for the current user. And okay. we, we saw that it was assigning them, so we know it yeah. got here, so we know it returned those. Collection of granted authorities is what's yeah. getting returned. Yeah. Now we gotta go look at how are we handling that collection of granted authorities. So that's, um, let's go look at, uh, where okay. is it trying to get to? So this is going to be yeah. one of the like a uh, authority mapper. Let's see. So the sequence of um, I know. Let me see. What is that? Uh, so it's in the web. The um, there are times when I want to work alone too when I'm struggling, when I don't want people to see, you know, the mistakes and the struggles. Yes. But the fun thing is, and I'll say this even about Ted, some of the, my favorite streams are when you were struggling, when you were frustrated because of the way that you thought out loud and the way you've got to the solution, that's where I learned a bunch. Yeah. So I, try yeah, it's, to, it's, it's, it's hard, but, um, I'm trying to work more in public, whether I'm going to yeah. be successful or not. Yeah. yeah I've seen you've been streaming a, a lot, which is great. It's great. trying to do more. I need to, to get get back more into it. Okay. Um, so, we're here, has so, authority. Uh, so, this is after it, after the login yep. sequence. Um, here you go, the user authorities mapper uh, up above. Web security config granted authorities mapper. Yeah, so this that'll. Is, That'll get the implementation. Um, that'll get my GitHub granted. So that's mm -hmm. um, Tramstars. Thanks for asking. I'm on Twitch as Java Grunt, and I'm on Kick as Java Grunt, and I. So yeah, I'm, I'm here, uh, but also on YouTube as at Deshawn. Stop on by. Trying to trying to stream a little bit every day. So let's see. So the index page. Um, <clears throat> is All right. So it would have. It would have already recognized that I was logged in, so it wouldn't have shown this page. Uh, so, so let's turn off this exception handling because basically this is hiding whatever is, is going on underneath. Um, so let's okay. let's rerun it and see what happens.
So let's go here. Oops. Wait, what just happened? Yeah, what just happened? It looks like nothing happened. Close this window. Forbidden 403. You don't have privs. So now it's immediately falling through, and we're not seeing. Because what we expect is that you're already logged in. Right? Mm hmm. I'm going to see so if I can easy. log out. Um, which is an overlooked uh, a lot of times the ability yeah. to log out. Can I, can I please have a new session? Can I please have new authentication? So okay. I expected it to now at this point, ask you to log back in, ask me to log back in and it's having trouble. So, okay. So interesting. It's actually having trouble rendering the home page. which should be permit all. So I should be able to see the home page because I don't, I don't, it, it doesn't do any authentication until I click a button to go somewhere else. Right. So has permit all changed? Is there something? No, this is, I mean, I can't imagine that. This but is like, not something that I, I would recall. And I'm going to go back to my, uh, the same link I sent earlier. Uh, yeah, let's go look at that. And authorization. Um, can we look back at your web security class? Okay. Uh, but spring handling if trailing slash has changed. Um, that mm. didn't change the trailing slash thing, but you're at root, so that uh, didn't change. I wonder, I wonder if that's it. Uh, slash because I have the star star here, but I don't have it here. Uh, so the putsy might, might be, uh, let's try that. Um, Let's try that. Yeah, I, I definitely, I don't think that this is the case though, the trailing slash. Well, it, if not, then we'll find out. But it is suspicious that I can't hit the, the home page. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, what am I think? Okay, let's actually run it. All right, and let's go. Let's... Haha. <laughs> Look at this. Teamwork makes the dream work. Man. All right. That so one that one was subtle because it wasn't because for all the others, I have the star star. Yep. But for the root, I did not. Yep. Um, so see this and this folks, this is the benefit of streaming. You get all sorts of helpful people in the oh, in, wow. in the audience and you yep. don't have to solve it on your own. <laughs> well, I was already up here. Uh, I was reaching out to my friends because I got I got the Slack. I don't have yeah, any answers. Got, I got Slack. I was gonna be like, hey, have you guys seen this? <laughs> so this is this is something that um, is clearly easy to overlook. Mm -hmm. uh, would likely, if I had proper testing, you going through security would have been found, um, but I don't. And so that's and you know and this is the reality, right? There there are always going to be areas unless you are lucky enough to be in a situation where you have code TDD from the start. You're going to have portions of your code that are just under tested. Fact of life. Um, and so the more you add to other places, yeah. it means that you can narrow down when you do run into problems. It's likely going to be into those areas that are under tested. Um, but at least if it's 10% of your code or 20% of your code instead of 90% of your code, you're going to be you're going to be much better off. 
So um, this is something that uh, would be great for the recipe to fix. Yep. And it's probably a little bit more invasive, but if it's going to do the fix that it should have done before, which is MVC matches to request matches, that should be part of part of this. That's another good candidate yeah. for a recipe. This, because yeah, this is just um, screaming to be like, fix me. But yeah, the so now thing that you know, if I'm if I'm ha trying to help somebody upgrade their spring security. The thing that I want is I want to have that test suite that says through for these different roles, like what is the login yep. like at a minute, like have a have that. Yep. That would catch this, right? Yep. Hold on one sec. So let's sign in with GitHub. And oh, a template parse problem. This is also unsurprising. Uh, because I am using accessing is empty is forbidden. Oh, that's interesting. So this is in our member register tablet. So um, we've got a time leaf rendering problem, which again is another area that is, is under tested. Uh, and so unsurprising to me, at least, that that this failed. Um, so it looks like when I was trying to uh, go to the member registration page, um, there's some, something that didn't parse correctly with time leaf spring six, which is what's underneath spring boot three. I'm going to step uh, for one second. I'm yeah, go for it. Anyway, I'll be right back. And so it's like dashboard has the same problem. So let's let's take a look. Uh, let's go minimize that. So actually, I'm going to do a commit of that fix. Uh, fix matcher or root path to boots. Slash star star. Um, right, so now we can close that, and we'll close that, and let's go. I'm glad my GitHub grant authorities mapper is all working fine because I was a little concerned about that. Uh, so let's go to um, let's go to let's go to the dashboard. So somewhere, I'm trying to access is empty. And it's saying, oh, not that. Uh, oh, did I stop it? No. There it is. So let's see. Um, that's interesting. So, uh, this used to work because is empty is actually considered a property because it a oh but it's it should be empty not is that's interesting this was allowed before so something must have changed so i have a question let's yeah. run that maven dependency updates and sure let's see if there's a, a time leaf well, it, it upgraded the time leaf. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try one little experiment, and okay. then we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to see if, if the putsy is, is two for two here. 
<laughs> so let's let's try this. Um, because that is empty was was allowed before, but uh -huh. it is a bit suspicious because not quite a property and it's not quite a method name and it might have been I was getting away with something I shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. So let's take a look. I love more constraints because that means I'm less likely to make make mistakes. So, so we still got. Uh, let me turn off the wrapping. We love deep stack traces. So we still got a parse exception. Uh, it looks like there might be another place I have that line 157. Okay. Yes, I should have fixed both of them. That's good. It, it, it went past the first one, so that's actually a good sign. All right. Voila. Putsy is two for two. Look at this. So apparently it shouldn't be uh, dot is empty, which makes sense from a Java bean property standpoint. It should either be empty and therefore it's treated as a property or it should be the method call is empty. And why I got away with that before, um, something's changed in the in the spring expression language parser. Uh, but um, now, now we're working. So now I should be able to create a test ensemble and I'll put in a fake link here and we'll do this. Um, um, so fun trick that I do is I have uh, Cloudflare. Uh, if you're familiar with Cloudflare. Yes, I use Cloudflare, on, yeah. You can do like page redirects based mm -hmm. on domains. Yes. So you could generate a Zoom link for whatever, and then you could automatically go to Cloudflare and redirect it to the Zoom link. So you could have like a friendly URL for the Zoom link, then they have it redirect to your Zoom link URL, whatever it is. The yeah, the reason I'm typing this in here, because if yeah. I leave it blank, um, mm -hmm. it will actually automatically go out using the Zoom API and go ahead and create a meeting automatically and then that link becomes part of the meeting and then people people can access it but if i put one in yep. it says oh you know what you're talking about and by putting this in i'm not having i'm basically preventing it from going out through the integration fantastic Very so cool. then i'll have to go and delete a meeting later um, i saw you had SendGrid as one of your uh, dependencies uh, that's definitely a part of my default stack for everything yeah send grid it's just it just works. I haven't, uh, I haven't, I, I, I probably will switch it at some point, but, um, but Hey, look at that folks. We did it. It, it works. Fantastic. So kind of, as I expected, there were problems in areas that were, don't have uh, automated tests against them. Um, but with, with the help of our, our wonderful, uh, audience, audience. Uh, we, we made it it's, through. It's all working. And, and not, unreasonable amount of time yeah right? yeah and one of the other things i would show is like hey yeah like here's all the other values now you're on a currently you know stable version like the yep. released version so as of you know tomorrow you are current right you're exactly you can still get support yeah and so you know i'll have i have a little more sort of manual testing that i'll do but um this will i'm gonna basically you know probably not today uh but yeah. But next time I stream, I'll, I'll push it to production. But this um, is great. Um, so yeah, this I is awesome. I would like to have another one of these, uh, and let's just take it to Spring Boot 3.2. Yeah. Sometime. And and we'll spend some time then uh, cleaning okay. up the cruft that is, that is you know, like we saw the, the test container stuff. We can clean yeah. that up, and, and that would be that would be good to do. Yeah. Fantastic. This is awesome. Great. Uh, when are we going to stream next time? I'm, I'm going to stream. Uh, not on a schedule, but a lot. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, so um, if you follow me on, on Twitch, uh, you'll at least be notified when I go live. Um, but uh, if you are not already in my Discord, um, actually, do I have a banner? I have a banner. 
So if you go there, you can find out about about uh, my stuff. Um, but if you join uh, my Discord, and the information is there, um, I basically will post in the announcements uh, when, um, with some amount of notice, usually a day or, or two in advance, sometimes more. Usually like a minute or two. Like, hey guys, I'm about to go live. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, some <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I'll be like, oh hey, uh, I'm I'm feeling good, so let me let me go let me go live, and so you'll 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 get one of those notices, and so um, so make sure you follow Deshaun, follow me, uh, in I know Deshaun, I, I I have the notifications turned on in YouTube, so I do know when you go live. Awesome. Um, and so uh, yeah, so we'll. We'll, we'll do more of these because this, this is this has been fun. I gotta get back into your Discord. Um, Mr. Shadow, sorry you you joined late. Uh, Wesley, we've we've upgraded a couple of applications from from Spring Boot two point six and two point seven to three point one point five, and and all, and but so much other stuff was was talked about besides that. Um, but it's up on YouTube. Um, since we simulcasted to, to YouTube, uh, so you can just catch the the, the rerun there. And, and it was uh, fun, and it worked. Uh, like yeah, mission accomplished for sure. And it was fun. Definitely, for me. I learned. I got yeah. a bunch of notes, uh, and I, you know, I'll definitely go back and look at the transcript. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got tons of stuff. Uh, I want this to say, great. Carl, thank you so much. Yeah, Carl, uh, thanks. Quincy, thank you so much. Simon, yeah. as always, like the 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 group effort was definitely. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, and I saved saved, saved lots of time for us. So thanks. Yeah. 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 So oh, and somebody said, please push those changes. Yes, I'll push those changes because Ensembler is is open source. Um, you're okay, welcome so. to to. Uh, I can take it for a spin. Uh, under Ted John, it's under Jitter Ted Ensembler. And yeah, so I'll push. I'll push the changes to um, once I'm once I'm prepared to, to to support it. I don't want to do it before the actual ensemble on Friday, just in case I've missed something when it when it goes to production. But sense. after we have our ensemble on Friday, I'll I'll push these changes. So you normally do those on Fridays. Yes. Um, I would love an invite for you know, as a spectator. I, I will send. I will send you an, send you an invite offline. Um, I. I don't use branches, tram stars. You know that I'm I'm trunk based development, so it's always it's always push domain, uh, and so if I push domain, it's going to deploy it. Um, so I'm not not quite ready ready to do that. I might do some more testing later if 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 I so that's if I the other up thing. to it. Uh, my on my tags uh, approach, where I can say only deploy it if it gets a tag, so I can do right. like you know hey run the test cool, and then I can go apply the tag. Yeah. So you can that. It's just a little another step, so you can still keep your stuff in GitHub. And yes, and that's actually something I need to do, be better at because there's times when, like the situation, I want people to be able to see the code, but I actually don't want to push to production just yet. Yeah. So. Uh, um, find the name of that plugin. There's. Yeah. Um, J Gitver. It hasn't been updated. Yes, in a while, yes, that was the one I looked at a, a while back, and I'll have to look at. I'll have to look at it again. That's the one I, um, I use. That, and then because I do a lot of like native image stuff, I also right. use uh, the OS Maven plugin, so I can get like the operating system and right. the architecture right. that I'm deploying to. Because I like to do ARM sixty four and x eighty six. Yep. Builds. Yep. So, yeah. Ted, this was. Amazing. Well, Deshaun, thanks so much. This is this uh, has been fun for me as well, and and I'm upgraded. It feels so good to be upgraded. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's do it again. Thanks Definitely. again. Thanks everybody. This yeah. was a blast. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to the next time. Yeah. All right. Thanks, folks. And for those of you who are celebrating, have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, for those of you who are not celebrating, have a good rest of your week. And I'll, I'll we'll see you next time.